which is now part of the English language dictionary and vocabulary, comes from the Tagalog word bundok, meaning mountain. Catch Aral Tarlakenyo every Monday to Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. over Radio Pilipino DCTC 828 and streamed live on Facebook page and YouTube channel of RTV Tarlac Channel 26. I am Jeremiah Gakutan, your English teacher broadcaster. Let's learn English together only here on Aral Tarlakenyo. Develop a passion for learning. If you do, you will never cease to grow. Anthony D. Angelo What a superb way to start the afternoon. It is my pleasure to be your teacher broadcaster today. I am teacher Jennifer E. Dean, and here we are for a delightful half an hour of fun and meaningful learning right here at Aral Tarlacenio RTV Tarlac Channel 26 simulcast over DZTC 828 Radio Filipino Tarlac. My greetings to those who are listening over the radio and watching via Facebook Live. Heads up, dearest grade 8 learners, because this lesson is all for you. Let's go! Please have your learning activity sheet with the competency of identify and use signals that indicate coherence with focus on causative as a result and consequently. Have a look back from your previous lesson discussed by teacher Arnie with the focus on additive transition signals. Connect the sentences in column A and column B. Remember to write all your activities, answers on your English lecture notebook or a piece of paper. Properly label them according to the corresponding activities. Meanwhile, for those who are watching via Facebook Live, you can also comment down your answers. You can see column A and column B flashed on your screen. To help you select the right answers more quickly, let's read the choices in column B first. A. In addition, she has six years of experience in broadcasting. B. He wanted to go as well. C. Furthermore, I don't have time to do so. D. Moreover, the price was right. E. Go to your bedroom. Let's proceed on the questions. Today, for number one, today, I don't want to watch a movie. The answer is letter C. Furthermore, I don't have time to do so. For number two, our new teacher can speak three languages. The answer is letter A. In addition, she has six years of experience in broadcasting. For number three, first, brush your teeth. The answer is letter E. Then go to your bedroom. Number four, I wanted to go to the park. The answer is letter B. He wanted to go as well. And for number five, the car looked good. The answer is letter D. 
Moreover, the price was right. Perfect score? Well done! I am sure Teacher Arnie is proud of you. Now, please listen to the discussion religiously. This will greatly help you answer your activity too. Let us take note part A, wherein you are going to find words in the puzzle that would fill in the blanks on the given passage. This is the puzzle from your activity. Take a closer look so as to start finding as many words as you can while listening. Coherence in a piece of writing means that the reader can easily understand it. Coherence is about making everything flow smoothly. The reader can see that everything is logically arranged and connected and relevance to the central focus of the essay is maintained throughout. As mentioned by Johns A.M., a piece of writing is coherent when it elicits the response, I follow you, I see what you mean. It is incoherent when it elicits the response, I see what you're saying here, but what has it got to do with the topic at hand or with what you just told me above? On the other hand, one key aspect of coherence is cohesion. This relates to the linking of ideas within a sentence, the linking of sentences or ties between sentences within a paragraph and the linking between paragraphs. To achieve coherence, you need cohesive devices. They are the glue that holds a piece of writing together. They carry meaning within a sentence and from a previous sentence into the next. They allow the reader to follow from one part of the text to another and to understand the logical relationships between sentences and paragraphs. Transitions are like traffic signals. They guide the reader from one idea to the next. They signal a range of relationships between sentences, such as comparison, contrast, example, and result. Have you found the right words on the puzzle? Wow, that is a lot of effort. Congratulations, that is a magnificent start. Let's keep moving. For activity two, part A, look at the image posted. Please write at least two sentences about it. To aid you in answering, we'll continue the discussion. There are several types and functions of transition signals. The focus of our lesson is the cause and effect, also known as causative transition signals. Causative transition signals are words and phrases that show the consequences of an action. For example, My friend set a picnic date this coming weekend. On Saturday morning, it rained unexpectedly. As a result, we called the picnic off and rescheduled it on the following week. The cause here is it rained unexpectedly. The effect is the picnic was called off and rescheduled. The causative transition used here is as a result, indicating the consequence of rain. On part C of your activity, Pick out the raindrops with words and phrases that you think might be causative transition signals. You have five seconds to do so. Are you done? 
how many words or phrases did you pick? Find out here if you have picked out the right ones. To express cause and effect, you can use these expressions. For cause, we have accordingly, because, due to, since. For effect, we have consequently, as a result, therefore, so. Examples are as follow. First, we can go to Sue's party because we'll be busy working on our project. For second, since you are such a good student, you'll get into a good college. Therefore, you get a job you like. As a result, you should be a happy person. Let's comprehend the lesson more by answering the Activity 3, Part A. Pair the sentences in Column A and Column B in order to connect ideas and achieve positive coherence. I will read the sentences in Column A, then choose the right pair from Column B. Please observe that upon revealing the answers, the causative transition words will be in bold. All right, let's go to number one. Cars are used increasingly for urban transport. The answer is I. As a consequence, pollution levels in cities are Worsening. Let's go to number two. Since you have been a consistent honor student and a skillful one, the answer is letter E. Therefore, there would be a possibility that would graduate cum laude or be cited with technical skills award in college. Number three, Mary studied hard for her exams. The answer is J. Therefore, she stopped, she topped the class. Number four, it rained heavily. The answer is letter A. Consequently, the marathon was called off. Number five, Walter did not pay attention in, in his math classes. The answer is H. As a result, he was not able to answer the problems given in the exams. Number six, I woke up early today. The answer is letter B because I slept early last night. Number seven. Everyone in the family got vaccinated. The answer is C. So everyone has a better shield against the virus. Number eight. Since the election is near, The answer is F. People are filing for their certificates of candidacy. Number nine. Face-to-face -face classes are not allowed these days. The answer is D. Due to the deadly virus. Number ten. When people are not following the minimum health protocols, the answer is G. They accordingly punish whoever is caught on the street. How was it? Do not worry if you did not get a perfect score. 
I have prepared more activities for you. First, take a deep breath. Then, we'll carry on. The following activity is an excerpt taken from a study entitled Impact of Coronavirus Pandemic on Education. Here, you are going to identify and box all the causative transition words or phrases used. Please read with me as we go along. You can write down the answers. Let's go! Impact of coronavirus pandemic on education. Since the recent outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic, gaps in the education sector has increased globally. As a result, COVID-19 outbreak has created educational disruptions and global health concerns that prove very difficult to manage by global health systems. As at now, no nation or race across the world is immune from the coronavirus pandemic. And the entire world seems overwhelmed by the speed of the spread and the devastating effects of COVID-19. The coronavirus pandemic has no boundaries. The effect is large and fast. Just within few months of the outbreak of the disease, it has drastically changed the lifestyles of the entire world. Consequently, billions of people were forced to stay at home, observe self-isolations, and work and learn from home. Thus, limiting the freedom of people to move, trade, or associate. Not only has COVID-19 caused a, a total lockdowns in many countries across the world, but it also caused the death of thousands of people, including women and the elderly. It was more worrisome to know that reports from various continents, including America, Africa, Asia, and Europe, indicated a daily increase in the number of new cases and mortality due to COVID-19. As at April 2020, the number of global COVID-19 cases has surpassed 1 million cases and more than 220,000 deaths. It was also frightening that the USA recorded more than 2,000 COVID-19 deaths in a single day, despite the country's strong commitment to the fight against the contagion. The number of coronavirus deaths was soaring with no immediate solutions in sight. The disease showed no sign of slowing down across the world. For that reason, the COVID-19 outbreak triggered the President of the United States, President Trump, to invoke the Defense Production Act. The government also issued a national emergency in accordance of the growing number of new cases of coronavirus in the country. That was from Priscilla 2020. The U.S. government also negotiated with the parliament to approve 
more than two trillion U.S. dollars stimulus package to combat the coronavirus pandemic and to provide some reliefs to citizens and business affected by the coronavirus outbreak accordingly. Similar situations were also replicated in many other countries, including Germany, where 810 billion US dollars were also set aside to contain the effects of the pandemic, yet the virus rapidly spread to many parts of the world. And here you can see my reference posted on our PPT that was from the Journal of Education and Practice, pages 108 to 121. That's it! I hope you were able to write down the causative transition signals. Please save it as we are going to need them on the next activity. All right, here on your post listening activities labeled as A, you are going to analyze the content of the excerpt by making a cause and effect table according to the given details. Okay. This, the first one is done for you. Okay, for letter A, you have the first column as the cause. Since the recent outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic, you can see that since is the transitional signal, which is causative. And for the second column, effect, gaps in the education sector has increased globally. So that is one sentence from the excerpt taken from the study. All in all, it is since the recent outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic, gaps in the education sector has increased globally. All right. Now, furthermore, to help you master the lesson, look at the image labeled as B. Write at least three sentences stating the causes and effects of online learning. Make sure to use the causative transition signals discussed on the lesson. Don't forget to write all your answers on your English lecture notebook. Okay, here we are. We are almost done with our lesson. Let's have a review of what we have learned today. Remember that causative transition signals are words or phrases that show the consequences of an action. The expressions that we can use here are for cause, we have accordingly, because, due to, and since. For the effect, we have consequently, as a result, therefore and so okay we have let's refresh the examples here my friend set a picnic date this coming weekend on saturday morning it rained unexpectedly as a result we called the picnic off and rescheduled it on the following week as we analyze the example we have here the cause is it rained unexpectedly and the effect is the picnic was called off and rescheduled the causative transition signal used here is as a result 
indicating the consequence of rain. Again, let's read the example. My friend set a picnic date this coming weekend. On Saturday morning, it rained unexpectedly. As a result, we called the picnic off and rescheduled it on the following week. There you go. That is our lesson today. And you have been listening religiously. This attitude will push you to attain brilliance. Please keep it up. Remember, my dear learners, always do your best so as to achieve excellence in everything that you do. This has been your teacher, broadcaster, Mom Jennifer E. Dean. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Please stay healthy and I wish you have great days ahead. See you! Upang matugunan ang mga kinakaharap na pagsubok na mga guro at mag-aaral sa gitna ng kasalukuyang pandemya, nagsanib tulong si na Congressman Charlie Cojuanco ng unang distrito ng Tarlac, DepEd Region 3 Regional Director Dr. May B. Eklar at Tarlac Schools Division Superintendent Dr. Ronaldo Poson para sa isang napapanahong proyekto na tinaguri ang Project Shine Aral Tarlacenyo. Ang mga mag-aaral ng grade 4 at grade 5, ganun din ang grades 8 and 9 sa buong probinsya ng Tarlac, kasalukuyang sumasa ilalim sa radio-based instruction. Katuwang ang himpilang DZTZ 828 kHz AM at RTV Tarlac, Channel 26. Ang Tarlac po nangunguna po ngayon pagdating po sa radio-based instruction. Marami pong humahanga sa atin. I'm very happy this station Itong DCTC could reach the whole of Region 3. Hindi natin alam. We are contributing. We are creating a very big dent in the history of Philippine education. And I am proud. I am here in Tarlac. This is the noble cause of education in which you and I, without you knowing it, we are bound to do. natin na Project Shine is a natural consequence dahil sa nangyari sa buong mundo. Let's continue to work together. I think it's very Filipino to practice uh, bayanihan in anything or most of the things that we do. And this is a manifestation of that. No? We have private sector, we have DepEd, we have local government all working together and I hope the parents of some of these children especially the parents that did not graduate from school or hindi nakapag-aral nung sila ay bata eh sana naman gamitin na nila itong opportunity na mag-schooling na rin sila kasama ng mga bat anak nila para mag-banding pati ang mga magulang sa mga bata. I look at this as doing God's work. Diba? So if you do God's work, it feels right. It's righteous. It's for good, not for evil. Good morning and uh, happy uh, learning uh, grade 4. Uh, welcome to Adal Tarlac Henyo here on RTV Tarlac Channel 26. Simulcast over DZDZ 828. Radio Pilipino Tarla. I am Teacher Mercy Pacheco Bognot. This is Alistair Aidatu. I am Marie Josephine B. Andrade. I am Teacher Princess Marie M. Duenas. And I will be your teacher broadcaster for today. Alam 
nyo ba na ang git ng Luzon ay tinaguri ang banga ng bigas ng bayan o kamalig ng palay ng Pilipinas dahil dito nagmumula ang malaking produksyon ng bigas sa ating bansa. Ito ay binubuo ng mga lalawigan ng Aurora, Pataan, Pampanga, Nueva Ecija, Zambales at Tarlac. Pagalihin natin manood ng Araw Tarlac Henyo, lunes hanggang biyernes, alas 8.30 ng umaga hanggang alas 5.30 ng hapon. Ako si Binibining Pia Isrin Kapiral, ang inyong feature broadcaster sa Araling Panlipunan dito sa Project Shine Araw Tarlac Henyo. Lagi nating tandaan ang pag-aaral ng Araling Panlipunan ay tungo sa daan ng pagiging makajos, makakalikasan, makatao at makabansa. Isang mapagpalang araw sa ating mga tagapakinig at tagasubaybay sa ating Project Shine Aral Talakenyo ng Schools Division of Tarlac Province. Atid sa inyo ng RTV, Chat, RTV Tarlac Channel 26 at sa bayang napapakinggan sa DZTC 828 AM Radio Pilipino Tarlac. Napapanood din tayo sa Facebook live stream at Converge Cable Channel 100. Nandito na naman tayo, nagsisikap at nagpupunyagi na maging makajos, makatao, makakalikasan at makabansa. Kumusta mga giliw kong tagapakinig? Ang aking pagbati at paghanga na sa kabila ng hamon ng pandemyang ating kinakaharap, kayo ay lubos na nagbibigay halaga sa ating edukasyon. Ako ang inyong guro sa Araling Panlipunan Grade 8, Ginang Jessel G. Torres. Sasamahan at gagabayan kayo sa most essential learning competency na naiuugnay ang geografiya sa pagbuo at pagunlad ng mga sinapunan kabyesnan sa daigdig. Ngunit bago tayo magsimula, Siguraduhin na kayo ay nasa komportabling lugar habang nakasubaybay ng ating tarlakenyo. Mas mainam din na kayo ay uh, naka, nakakain o nakapagmerienda na upang maging alerto ang inyong pag-iisip at maayos na maunawaan ang ating talakayan sa oras na ito. Ihanda ang CP ng inyong module, papel at ballpen, nagagamitin sa ating pag-aaral at iwasan ang paggawa ng ibang bagay at ituon ang sarili sa paksang ating tatalakayin. Kaya't halina, simulan na nating makinig at matuto. Bago tayo mag-umpisa, nais ko munang balikan natin ang natalakay natin nung nakaraang episode. Napag-aralan natin ang tatlo sa limang sinaunang kabiasan sa daigdig. Ito ay ang kabihas ng Mesopotamia, kabihas ng Indus, at kabihas ng sa Ilogwangho. Subukan nating sagutin ang limang tanong na aking ibibigay ukol sa sinaunang kabihas ng daigdig na ating natapos nung nakaraang episode. Number one o unang tanong. Ang ano ang kahulugan ng salitang Mesopotamia? Ano ang pahulugan ng salitang Mesopotamia? Kung ang sagot mo ay pagitan ng dalawang ilog at ito ay galing sa salitang Greek na meso o pagitan at potamos o ilog. Mahusay, tama ang iyong sagot. Ikalawang tanong, Saan nagsimula 
ang kabiasnan sa India? Ikalawang tanong, saan nagsimula ang kabiasnan sa India? Kung ang iyong sagot ay sa ilog, ilog okay, so, sa Indus River, magaling ang ikatlong katanungan. Saan naman nagsimula ang kabiasnan sa China? Saan naman nagsimula ang kabiasnan sa China? Ang tamang sagot ay tabing ilog na malapit sa Wangho River o Yellow River. Napakahusay. Okay, tama ang iyong mga sagot. Ikaapat na tanong. Ito ay matatagpuan, matatagpuan sa rehiyon tinaguri ang Fertile Crescent. Ito, number four o ikaapat na tanong. Ito ay matatagpuan sa rehiyon tinaguri ang Fertile Crescent. Ang tamang sagot ay Mesopotamia. Magaling. Tama ang iyong sagot. Ikalama panghuling katanungan. Ito ang kauna-unahang dinastiyang naghari sa China. Ito ang kauna-unahang dinastiyang naghari sa China. Kung ang iyong sagot ay siya o siya, mahusay. Tama ang iyong sagot. Ilan ang nakuha mong mga sagot? Batid ko na marami. Kung hindi man, ay may pagkakataon ka pa okay, na makabawi sa susunod nating gawain. Nadaram ako na kayo'y handa na sa susunod natin aralin. Halina't simulan na natin. Sa pagtalakay ng panimula ng sinaunang kabihasnan, mahalagang malaman ang bahaging ginagampanan ng geografiya sa paghubog ng kabiasnan noong sinaunang panahon. Makakatulong kung ang bawat mag-aaral ay magkakaroon ng mapa ng daigdig o world map at pagiging pamilyar sa pitong kontinente. Anyong lupa, anyong tubig, at iba pang bumubuo okay, sa katangi ang pisikal na daigdig. Ang paksang tatalakayin natin ngayon ay karugtong lamang okay nung ating last episode, okay, nung Martes. Ang paksa natin ngayon ay ang geografiya sa pagbuo at pagunlad ng mga sinaunang kabehasnan sa daigdig. Ating ipagpapatuloy ang, at, ang uh, nakaraang episode. Patatalakay natin ngayon ang kabehasnan ng Egypt at kabehasnan ng Mesoamerika. Unahin natin ang geografiya ng Ehipto o geografiya ng Egypt. Pag pinag-uusapan natin ang geografiya ng Egypt, mahalagang tandaan natin na kapag pinag-uusapan ang geografiya ng Ehipto, ay meron tayong dalawang bahagi. Meron tayong Lower Egypt at Upper Egypt. Ang Lower Egypt ay nasa bahaging hilaga ng lupain o kung saan ang ilog Nile ay dumadaloy patungo Mediterranean Sea. Ang Lower Egypt ay nasa bahaging hilaga ng lupain o kung saan ang ilog Nile ay dumadaloy patungo Mediterranean Sea. Ang ikalawan man ay ang Upper Egypt. Ito ay nasa bahaging katimugan mula sa Libyan Desert hanggang sa Abu Simbel. Suriin ang kinaroroonan ng Lower Egypt at Upper Egypt sa mapa okay, na ipapakita natin ngayon. Ang, Lord, ang Lower Egypt ay nasa hilagang bahagi ng lupain. Ang Upper Egypt naman ay nasa katimugan mula sa Libyan Desert. Yan, yung ating mapa. Pagmasdan ninyo at suriin ang kinaroroonan ng Lower at Upper Egypt. Ngunit, saan nga ba umusbong ang kabihasnan sa Ehipto? 
kung ang Mesopotamia ay umusbong sa lambak ng Ilog Tigris at Ilog Euphrates, at ang kabihas ng Indus naman ay lambak o sa lambak ng Ilog Indus, at ang kabihas ng China ay umusbong sa Ilog Guangho, saan naman kaya umusbong ang kabihas ng Egypt? Ang kabihas ng Egypt ay nagumpisa at umusbong sa lambak ng Ilog Nile. Ang Nile River ay dumudaloy mula sa katimugan patungong hilaga. Ang sinaunang Egypto ay isang matandang kabihasnan sa, sila, sa silangang hilaga ng Afrika. Mga magsasaka, mga ngalakal, at madirigma ang karamihan sa mga tao sa Egypto. Dati-dati, ang malakas na pag-ulan sa lugar na pinagmumula ng Nile ay nagdudulot ng pag-apaw ng ilog tuwing Hulyo bawat taon. Ang pagbahang idinudulot ng Nile ay nahinto lamang okay, noong panahong 1970 nang maitayo ang Ashwan High Dam. Ang Ashman High Dam ay tinayo upang makapagbigay ng elektrisidad at supply o maiayos ang supply ng tubig. Ang Ashwan High Dam ay nakapagbibigay ng elektrisidad at naiayos o naisaayos ang supply ng tubig sa Egypto. Ang Egypt ay tinatawag bilang the gift of the Nile. Bakit kaya ito tinawag na the gift of the Nile? Dahil kung wala ang ilog na ito, ang buong lupain sa Egypto ay magiging isang disyerto. Tila hinihiwa ng ilog na ito ang bahaging hilaga ng silangang disyerto ng Afrika noong pamang unang panahon. Sa panahong neolitiko, ang taunang pag-apaw ng ilog ay nagbibigay daan upang makapagtanim ang mga magsasaka sa lambak tilog. Ang tubig baha ay nagdudulot ng mahalumigmig sa tuyong lupain at iniiwan o nagiiwan o nagiiwan ng matabang lupain na mainam para sa pagtatanim. Ang mga magsasaka ay kaagad okay, na nagtatanim sa pagbaba ng tubig baha. Ang putik na dala ng ilog ay unti-unting naiipon sa bunganga ng ilog Nile sa hilaga upang maging latian o yung tinatawag nating delta. Paano nga ba napaparami ng mga taga Egypto ang kanilang mga pananim? Okay, upang maparami ang kanilang mga maaring itanim bawat taon, ang sinaunang Egyptian ay gumagawa ng mga imbaka ng tubig at nagbubukay ng mga kanal upang pagdaluyan ng tubig sa kanilang lupang sinasaka. Ang ganitong proyekto ay nangangailangan ng malaking bilang ng mga manggagawa, sapat na teknolohiya at maayos na mga plano. Ang Nile ang nagsisilbing mahusay na ruta sa paglalakbay noong panahong iyon. Nagawa nitong mapag-ugnay ang mga pamayanang matatagpuan malapit sa pampang ng ilog. Bakit mahalaga? Okay, bakit kaya mahalaga ang pagkakaroon ng mga disyerto sa silangan at kandurang bahagi ng ilog? Ang pagkakaroon kasi ng mga disyerto sa silangan at kanurang bahagi ng ilog ay nakapagbibigay ng kaligtasan sa mga taga-Egypt sabagkat nahahadlangan nito okay, ang mga posibleng pagsalakay at dito ang mga tao ay nagawang makapamuhay ng payapa at masagana sa loob ng mahabang panahon. Hindi lamang ang mga kontinente ng Asia, Europe, at Afrika ang umunlad ang pamumuhay ng mga tao. Nakamit din ng mga katutubo sa kontinente ng Amerika ang kadakilaan ng isang kabihasnan. Sa pagdaan ng panahon, naging matagumpay ang mga katutubong ito 
na nakamit ang kaunlaran ng kanilang pamayanan. Na maghihahanin tulad natin sa mga kabehastang umusbong sa iba pang panig ng mundo. Ang kalurang bahagi ng mundo ay binubuo ng dalawang malaking kontinente o, o dalawang kontinente o malalaking kontinente. Okay, ito ang North America at South America. Gayon ay bumako tayo sa kabihas ng Mesoamerica. Ang Mesoamerica o Central America ay rehiyon sa pagitan ng Sinaloa River Valley sa gitna ng Mexico at Gulf of Fonseca sa katimugan ng El Salvador. Samantala, ang katimugang hangganan ay mula sa baybayin ng Honduras sa Atlantic hanggang sa gulad ng islop ng Nicaragua sa Pacific at sa tangway ng Nicoya sa Costa River. So maraming sayantista ang naniniwala na may mga pangkat ng mga mga nga sa o hunter ang nandayuhan mula sa Asia. Patungo, okay, North America, patungo sa North America, libong taon na ang nakaraan. Unti-unting tinahak ng mga ito, okay, ang kalurang baybayin ng North America, patungong timog at nakapagtatag sila ng mga kalat-kalat na pamayanan sa kontinente ng North America at South America. Sa kasalukuyan, sa kalaw ng Mesoamerica, ang malaking bahagi ng Mexico, Guatemala, Belize, El Salvador, at kalurang bahagi ng Honduras. At hango ang pangalan ng Mesoamerica sa katagang meso na nangangahulugang gitna. Ito ang lunduyan ng mga unang kabihasnan sa Amerika. Sa lupaing ito, ang malaking pagkakaiba sa elebasyon ng lupa at dalas ng pagulan ay nagdudulot ng mga uri ng klima at ekolohiya sa iba't ibang bahagi ng rehiyon. Mabago-bago ang panahon sa rehiyong ito. Uh, dito na itatag ang unang panirahan ng tao at isa ito sa mga lugar na unang pinag-usbungan ng agrikultura tulad ng alurang Asia at China. Sa kasalukuyang panahon, may malaking populasyon ang rehiyong ito. Batay sa mga natuklasang relikya ng mga arkeologo, maraming maulad na pamayanan ang umusbong sa Amerika. Ang rehiyon kung saan matatagpuan ang kabihas ng ito ay tinatawag natin na Meso Amerika. Sa mga lugar na ito, matatagpuan ang mga unang kabihas ng sa Amerika. Ngunit, Bago matapos ang ating leksyon, ngayong araw na ito, nais ko munang magbigay ng kuunting trivia tungkol sa ating aralin. Magbibigay ako ng mga kaunting kaalaman okay, tungkol sa aralin natin ngayong araw na ito. Alam nyo ba na ang Mesopotamia ay itunuturing na kauna-unahang kabiasnan sa buong daigdig. Ang Mesopotamia ay kilala o kinilala bilang cradle of civilization. Dahil dito umusbong ang unang sibilisadong lipunan ng tao. Bakit nga ba tinawag na Yellow River ang Ilogwangho? Dahil ang Ilogwangho ay nagdadala, okay, na tinatawag natin na lowest o dinaw na lupa. Okay, dahil uh, sa dilaw, okay, na kulay ng tubig, dahilan kung bakit ito tinawag na Yellow River. Uh, tinatawag ding 
okay, China's River of Sorrow, ang Wangho River. Okay, dahilan, dahil na rin, okay, dahil uh, sa pagkamatay ng maraming mga Chino at pagkasira ng mga ari-arian tuwing aapaw ang ilog na ito. Dahil sa uh, maraming uh, namamatay at maraming nasisira ng mga ari-arian, tinawag ang Yellow River o Wangho River o na China's River of Sorrow. Alam niyo ba na ang kauna-unahang umusbong na kabiasnan sa Central America ay ang mga Olmec? Ang salitang Olmec ay nangangahulugang rubber people dahil sila ang kauna-unahang gumamit ng dagda ng punong rubber o goma. Alam niyo ba na ang tawag sa ano ang tawag o kay sa hari ng mga taga Ehipto? Ang tawag sa hari ng mga taga Ehipto ay ginatawag ng mga pharaohs o parao, pero Ang tumatayo o mga perong ito ay tumatayong mga pinuno at hari ng Ehipto. Siya ay tinaguruan din okay, bilang isang Diyos na taglay ang mga lihim ng langit at lupa. Para sa mga pero, sila ang tagapagtanggol ng kanilang nasasakupan. Sana ay naunawaan ninyo okay, ang ating paksang aralin ngayong araw na ito. At sana ay maibahagi nyo rin ito sa iba. Ngayon tapos na natin ang ating leksyon, oras na para tasahin o sukatin ang inyong mga kaalaman ukol sa pagbuo at pag-unlad ng mga sinaunang kabihasnan sa daigdig. Ihanda ang inyong kwaderno at ballpen para sa inyong gawain. Isulat ang inyong pangalan, antas, pangkat, at petsa ngayong araw na ito. Kailangan nyo lamang ay makinig at surihing mabuti ang bawat tanong. Handa na ba kayo? Mukhang handa na nga kayo. Kung gayon, ay pakinggang mabuti ang mga panuto at ang mga tanong na aking babasahin. At isulat ninyo ang tamang sagot sa inyong sagotang papel. Para sa ating gawain, Tukuyin ang ilalarawan ng mga sumusunod na pahayag. Ayusin ang mga titik na nasa loob ng panaklong upang mabuo ang akmang sagot. Number one, ito ay nasa bahaging katimugan mula sa Libyan Desert hanggang sa Abu Simbel. Ito ay nasa bahaging katimugan mula sa Libyan hanggang sa Abu Simbel. Kung ang sagot mo ay Upper Egypt, kayo ay tama. Number two, sa kasalukuyan, saklaw nito ang malaking bahagi ng Mexico, Guatemala, Bilis, El Salvador, at kanlurang bahagi ng Honduras. Sa kasalukuyan, saklaw nito ang malaking bahagi ng uh, Guatemala, Bilis, at El Salvador. Kung ang inyong sagot ay Mesoamerica, kayo ay magaling. Ikatlong tanong, ito ay nakapagbibigay ng elektrisidad at naiayos ang supply ng tubig. Kung ang sagot mo ay Ashwan Haidam, mahusay. Number four, ito'y nangangahulugang rubber people dahil sila ang kauna-unahang gumamit ng dagta ng puno ng uh, rubber o goma. Kung ang iyong sagot ay Olmec, tama. Number five, ang kabihas na ng Egypt ay nagumpisang umusbong sa lambak na ito. Ang kabihas ng Egypt ay nagumpisang umusbong sa lambak na ito. Kung ang sagot ninyo ay Ilog Nile, kayo ay magaling. Nakuha nyo ba ang mga tamang sagot, mga bata? 
Wow! Napakahusay ng aking mga mag-aaral. Okay, at, para, uh, at para naman sa hindi nakakuha, ay huwag mag-alala. Bagkus ay bumawi. Okay, susunod nating episode. Kasama kaming mga guro sa Araling Panlipunan 8 bilang inyong mga tagagabay. At para sa inyong karagdagang gawain at uh, huling gawain, pumili ng isang sinaunang kabiasnan na iyong ilalarawan ang geografiya. Gumawa ng isang geobookmark na nagpapakita ng kaugnayan ng geografiya at pag-unlad ng sinaunang kabiasnan sa daigdig. Para sa karagdagang impormasyon, tignan ang pahina labing isa ng ating Module 4. Talagang pinahanga ninyo ako sa inyong ipinamalas na katalinuhan at kooperasyon. Okay, isang bahagi ng ating leksyon ang ating natapos. Okay, talakayin. Sana ay huwag ninyong kalimutan ang mga mahalagang aral na inyong natutunan. Inaasahan ko na kayo'y natuto sa ating talakayan ngayong araw na ito. Muli. Ako ang inyong guro sa Araling Panlipunan 8, ginang Jessel G. Torres, na nagsasabing ang pag-aaral ng Araling Panlipunan ay daan sa pagiging makajos, makatao, makakalikasan at makabansa. Hanggang sa muli, paalam! Informasyong may kalidad, servisyong may halaga. Sa saan mang bahagi ng Pilipinas, on air, on air. Sa sa saan mang bahagi ng mundo, online, online. Sa ano mang uri ng pamumuhay, kasama, katuwa, kapino, kabahagi mo, kabahagi mo. Radio Pilipino, Radio Pilipino. Matapos naman ang tatlong araw na cleaning, disinfection at maintenance activities, balik na sa regular operation schedule ng RUA Market mula 4 a.m. to 8 p.m. araw-araw. Dagdag pa rito, mayroon ng meat o karne na available sa palengke. Pinaalalahanan naman ng mga mamimili na huwag kalimutang magmas at i-observe pa rin ang physical distancing. Samantala, patuloy pa rin ang pagsasagawa ng City Environment and Natural Resource Office ng Cleanup Drive Operation at Vegetation Control sa ilang pampublikong lugar sa Tarlac City. Ito ay parte ng pagsulong ng advokasya na Tarlac City Clean City. Sa naganap na 19th Thailand International Folklore Festival na ginanap sa Shantaburi, Kurat Surin Province sa Thailand, Ginawa na naman ng Tarlac State University Performing Arts Dance Troupe ng tatlong excellence trophies para sa kanilang spectacular costume during the performance, manifesting careful and elegant performance, at international leadership with growth spirit. Bukod pa rito, ang culture and arts head na si Professor Marcelino Balangkit ay nakatanggap naman ng Diamond of Asia para sa kanyang mga tagumpay sa mga aktibidad sa international na kultura at sining na pinangalan ng World Peace Declare sa pamamagitan ng mga aktibidad sa international folklore activities. Dagdag pa rito, nakatanggap rin ang mga ito ng Thailand IFF PIN kung saan itinatampok nito ang 719 international artist delegates na nagmula sa 24 na bansa, Pilipinas, Thailand, Albania, Bulgaria, Bangladesh, Cambodia, China, Hungary, Italy, India, Indonesia, Israel, Japan, Korea, Laos, Myanmar, Nepal, Nigeria, Poland, Peru, Sri Lanka at Turkey. Samantala, base sa lumabas na resulta ng Certified Public Content Licensure Examination, labing walo ang nadagdag sa bilang ng mga licensed TSU shans. Ang Tarlac State University ay nakapagtala ng 50% institutional passing rate at 55.17% passing rate para sa first-time takers. How are you today? Hello, everyone. Hello, 
learners of Tarla. Good morning, Mas Talino Grade 4 learners! Welcome to Aral Tarla Kenyo here on RTV Tarla Channel 26. Simulcast over DCPC Radio Filipino Tarla. I'm Sir Glenn, your teacher broadcaster. Broadcasting live here at Paniki Tarla. Remotely here in Concepcion, Tarla. Live here at Barangay Pedro El Quines, Mayantok, Tarla. Broadcasting live from Ramos National High School. Your anchor teacher today for Grade 9 Mathematics. Your partner in education this time of pandemic. Welcome to my class in Electrical Insulation and Maintenance 8 under Technology and Livelihood Education. I am Sir Ever Garang, your teacher broadcaster for today's episode of I will Tarlac Kenyo of SDO Tarlac Province by RTV Tarlac Channel 26. I will cast over DCTC 8 to 8 AM Radio Filipino Tarlac and you can also watch us live via Converge Cable Channel 100. Join me. I'm going to lead you on acquiring the knowledge and skills to learn in TLD8. Together, we will take another fun and learning journey. For this special episode, all you have to do is sit, watch, and listen. So attend all the activities that will give you surely an excitement as you learn inside your home. Today, you will be able to identify the different tools and materials used in electrical installation and maintenance, applicable to a specific job. Come and join me as we start our learning adventure, Tarlakenyo. Don't forget to hold your self-learning modules together with your paper and pen to learn this learning activity. Are you ready for your first learning task? If you are, listen well as I show you on the screen the activities that you need to answer. Make sure that you are in a comfortable place, apart from noise, so that you can hear me loud and clear while watching and listening to this program. You can also watch RTV Aral Tarlakenyo through Facebook Live. Before we start with our lessons for today's episode, let me play a short video presentation to give you a short review on different electrical tools and materials that we are already familiar with. Puputulin natin kabayan yung sobrang flexible house dito sa loob ng Jensen box. Gamit itong ating improvised na lagare.
ng kabayan itong pula kabayan ito ang ating neutral at ito namang dilaw na wire ito ang ating live wire ang live wire natin kabayan dito nakakabit sa may bulls na ito at yung neutral naman natin dito sa may thread ito na tayong mag-wiring kabayan subukan na natin pailawin dito sa labas ayan ba ito namang one gang switch natin kabayan sabay na iilaw yung dalawang bulb na yun subukan natin kabayan ayan. dalawang bulb control ng one gang switch salamat sa inyong panonood kabayan kung nagustuhan nyo ang aking video, sana huwag nyo kalimutang mag-like at subscribe sa aking channel. Salamat ka ba? We will learn more if you keep tuned on our Lakenya. Welcome to the Electrical Installation and Maintenance Exploratory Course. It is important to know first the different electrical tools and materials that you will use and encounter in this episode. There are varieties of tools used in electrical installation and maintenance. The electrical tools and materials that we will be discussing in these episodes are the basic ones. But it is sufficient enough for your initial understanding about electrical installation and maintenance. Are you ready to gain new knowledge on different electrical tools and materials as well as their uses and function? If you are, relax and listen as we go on with our lesson. Under electrical tools, we have the following. First, we have the screwdriver. These tools are made of steel, hardened, and tempered at the tip used to loosen or tighten screws. First, the standard or flat screwdriver. The blade tip is wedge shaped and resembles to a negative sign. This is used to drive screws with single slot head. Next is the Philip screwdriver. It's a cross tip resembling to a positive sign and commonly used to drive screws with cross slash head. The third one is the stubby screwdriver. It comes in either standard or Phillips screwdriver with short chunk or blade and a shorted handle used to turn screws in tight space where standard screwdriver cannot be used. Another tool that being used in electrical installation and maintenance the hammer. These are tools used in driving or pounding and pulling out nails. They are made of hard steel, wood, plastic, or rubber. The following types of hammer are A, low hammer, B, mallet, C, ball pin hammer. Next, we have the pliers. This is made from metal with insulator in the handle 
Another use for cutting, twisting, bending, folding, and gripping wires and cables. The combination pliers or lineman's pliers is used for gripping, folding, and cutting electrical wires and cable, and even small nails. They are usually used by linemen in doing heavy tasks. The second one is the side cutting pliers. The type of pliers is used for cutting fine and medium and big wires and cables. Then we have the long nose pliers. This is used for cutting and holding fine wires. The next tool, the wire stripper. The tool is used for removing insulation of medium-sized wires ranging from gauge number 10 to gauge number 16. Then we have the electrician's knife. This is used by linemen to remove insulation of wire and cables in low and high voltage transmission line. Next is the portable electric drill. A small drilling machine with a chuck capacity of 1/4 inch to 3/8 inch. It is used in making holes on metal sheets and concrete wall. The last tool being used in electrical installation and maintenance is the hacksaw. This tool is used to cut metal conduit and armored cable. Before we proceed, let me ask you this. Which of these tools matters you most? Okay, great. Well, you are now starting to learn electrical tools. Let's move ahead to another learning experience. After gaining knowledge from electrical tools, I believe that you are now ready to learn different materials being used in electrical insulation and maintenance. Electrical materials are developed and constructed for special purpose such as to, number one, to control the flow of current in an electrical circuit. Number two, it carry electrical current from the source to the load or current consuming apparatus. Third, it holds and secure wires to its fixtures inside and outside houses and buildings. And the last one, it protects the houses, buildings, appliances, and instruments from any destruction and damage. We have the first material, the convenience outlet. It's a device that acts as convenient source of electrical energy for current consuming appliances. It's where the main plug of an appliance is inserted and usually fastened on the wall or connected in an extension cord. It may be single, duplex, triplex, or multiplex, and should be surface type or flat type. Second, the switch. It's a device that connects and disconnects the flow of electric current in the circuit. There are many shapes, designs, and types, and they are classified as hanging, glass, and surface types. We also have the circuit breaker. It is a protective device used to automatically blow and cut the current when the trouble in the circuit such as short circuit or overload occurs. Then we have the mail plug. It's a device inserted into a convenience outlet to conduct electric current. A flat cord is attached to one end and the other end is connected to a current consuming instrument appliance. Next, the lamp holders. These are devices that hold and protect the lamp and are also called as lamp socket or receptacle. These come in many designs and sizes. They are classified as flash, hanging, or weatherproof, and surface type. Then we have the fuse. It is an electrical safety device that operates to provide overcurrent protection on electric circuit. Another material is a junction box, an octagonal shaped electrical material where the connection or joints of wires are being done. It's also where the plus type lamp holder is attached. This could be made of metal or plastic PVC polyvinyl chloride. Then we have the utility box. It's a rectangular shape, metallic, or plastic PVC material in which last type convenience outlet which are attached. 
Then, another one, the flat cord. So the flat stranded wire used for temporary wiring installation. Commonly used in extension cord assembly. It comes in a roll of 150 meter and with sizes of gauge number 18 to gauge number 16, AWG or American wire gauge. Then we have the electrical wire or conductor. An electrical material that could be letter A, stranded wire. This is made of multiple strands joined together to make a single wire. Mm -hmm. We have the solid wire. It's made of single strand of copper or aluminum wire. These are made in wiring installation inside and outside the building. Then we have the conduits or pipes. It is an electrical material used as the passage of wire for protection and insulation. This could be rigid metallic, flexible metallic conduit or FMC, rigid metallic or PVC, and flexible non-metallic or corrugated plastic conduit or CPC. Another material are the lamp. Clamp. It is an electrical material used to hold and anchor electrical conduit in their proper position. Then the last one are the connectors. It is used to attach metallic or non-metallic conduit to the junction or utility boxes. Are you ready, Tarla Kenyo? Let's continue learning as we enter the activity and see if you can get a perfect score. Take note, you may also message your subject teacher for your question and inquiries. You are given 10 seconds to answer each number. Write your answer on your answer sheet. Are you ready? I know that you will do your best. For your question number one. What tool you are going to use if you cannot reach tight space or small opening where other pliers cannot reach and also use in making terminal loops of copper wires? Is it A, the friction knife? B, combination pliers? C, long nose pliers? Or D, side cutting pliers? Now, let's check your answer. Very good. It's C. Long nose pliers. Question number two. This is a device inserted into a convenience outlet to conduct electric current. Is it A. Circuit breaker. B. Convenience outlet. C. Made plug. Or D. Switch. Correct. Right. It's C. Mail plug. Question number three. This tool has a cross tip resembling to a positive sign and it is used to drive screws with cross slab heads. Is it A. Flat screwdriver. B. Phillips screwdriver. C. Allen screwdriver. Or D. Tabby screwdriver. You are right. It is B. Phillips screwdriver. Question number four. It is an octagonal shape, electrical material, where the connection or joints of wires are being done. Is it A. Convenient outlet. B. Use. D. Junction box. Or D. Utility box. Very good. It is junction box. Question number five. This tool is used to cut metal conduit and armored cable. Is it A, hacksaw, B, mallet, C, portable electric drill, or D, wire stripper?
If your answer is A, Axel, you got it right. Did you get everything right? Great. Okay, count the number of the correct item. Congrats to those who got a perfect score. You did a good job. It's job well done for those score is three to four. Those other who score is two and below, don't be sad. Always keep on trying. Just get your module and review your answer. Some question that you may ask and let me read. Can we use that code for wiring installation inside and outside the building? The answer is yes, for, but for temporary purposes only. It's not advisable for permanent wiring installation. Another question. Why most of the houses use CPC or corrugated plastic conduits nowadays? The answer is, it's because it's easy to use and cost efficient. If you work in electrical field or home do it yourself, buying electrical supplies can be a big part of your job. There are many things to consider when you are buying electrical materials, including cost, quality, and efficiency. Here are some things to think about the next time you are buying electrical supplies for your next work or at home project. Here are some tips in buying tools and materials. Number one, plan before buying electrical supplies. This plan should help you figure out exactly what you will need for the project and how much of this supply you will need. Measure the areas where you will be working to decide how much wire will be needed. Number two, pay attention to the safety of your electrical supplies. And number three, the dose of the pliers should have the capability of handling pressure and shape, minimizing slipping with an increased inefficiency. Students, I hope you learned a lot for today's episode. This project shine, Aral Tarlaqueño, Brought to you by the Department of Education, Division of Tarlac Province in cooperation with DCTC 828 AM station. I would like to end by saying this from Leonardo da Vinci. Learning never exhausts the mind. Let us always remember, in TLE, we gain skills, knowledge, and progress. Thank you and keep safe everyone. This is your TLE broadcaster, Sir Ever of Parangoren Integrated School High School Department, signing off. Para sa iyo, ano ang COVID-19? Virus. Malungkot. Pagkawala. Pandemya. Ito ay isang korupsyon. Ito ay isang pahirap. Di COVID-19 para kanya kat biligro. Sa nga pandemic, makurit nga magka-pandemic. Kaya, ma kaya makaradlo kito nga sa kitalimbawa. So kung ito yun ang uh, virus na nga nakasunod na ito, delikado ito parte, parte ang mga tao. Pandemic. Ngayon para kung daga... Dapat itong uh, distruso na uh, sa kalibutan. Ikaw, paano ka makakatulong? Para makuha natin itong mga pandemic, kinakailangan po uh, protocol, social distancing, nganhin, may face mask. Make sure na itamang yung prepare nga food, uh, uh, naka-guideline siyahan cleanliness, tapos pinapalo naman itong social distancing. Okay, so kata kung driver ako, amo, Nagtong kamihin mga barrier para ng motor para proteksyon gihapon, biri lang para kung pati nga tatakong pamilya. Mga tulong nga may iwasan iti COVID-19, iti pamamagitan, iti pagsunod ko, iti health protocol kung hanang arumwa, DJ Balaymi. Sa kagagayam ni Peter Amigable, salamat.
This is your one, your only one, your only, only one, 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 one FM. One FM. Your only one FM. One FM. na ang whale shark ay hindi isang whale, ang whale shark o butanding ay kinikilalang world's largest fish at tinatawag gentle giants. May sukat itong 12 meters. Maliliit ang ngipin ng butanding, kaya naman planktons o maliliit na hipon at isda lang ang kaya nilang kainin. Simula noong 2011, marami nang nahumaling mag whale shark watching sa Oslo, Cebu. Lam nyo na! Yan ang whale shark! Kumusta mga video kong tagapakinig? Nagbabalik ang inyong paaralang panghimpapawid Aral Tarlac Henyo Sa RTV Tarlac Channel 26 At sa bayang naririnig sa DZPC 828 Radyo Pilipino Tarlac Ayaw rin ay napapanood sa FB Live ng RTV Tarlac Channel 26 Sumasahim papawid mula sa bayan ng Pura Tarlac Mula sa bayan ng San Clemente Mula rito Sa Borok Elementary School, Pura Tarla. Sa Bayan ng Kapas Tarla. Ako, ang inyong guro. Na maghahatid sa inyo ng makabuluhang pagtalakay sa ating karadini. Nihao, konnichiwa, anyong hasabnika. Or should I say, hello everyone, good afternoon, especially to all grade 8 students. Welcome to Aral Tarlac Henyo here on RTV Tarlac Channel 26. Samulcast over DZTZ Radio Filipino Tarlac. I am Sir Michael Garcia, your teacher broadcaster for music grade 8, live broadcasting at Victoria Tarlac. Join me as we learn together in this 25 minutes of meaningful discussion. I just want to tell some gentle reminders. Make sure that you are in the most comfortable place while tuning into our live stream, television, and radio station. Also, make sure that you have a copy of your learning module and learning activity sheet in grade 8 music for second quarter to better understand our lesson for today. Today is the first day of second quarter Music 8, another chapter to begin, appreciate and explore music in the different countries of Asia. As we go back in quarter one, you learned and enjoyed the music of Southeast Asia and even familiarized the basic concepts and principles of musical elements, pitch, timbre, tempo, genre, and time signature that are commonly presented on their songs and instrumental pieces. You also learned that their music has a great influence on the history and culture which some of their ceremonies are connected to their beliefs, state, and community affairs. In addition, music is important to the lives of Southeast Asian people. Since we are done discussing Southeast Asian music during first quarter, 
We will now travel to the different countries of Asia, China, Japan, and Korea. Students, let us now study and appreciate the vocal and instrumental music of East Asian countries. As we are about to begin the discussion, get yourself a learning module and learning activity sheet with a clean sheet of paper and bullpen. Now that you are ready, let's get started. Remember, your learning task for today, at the end of the lesson, you should be able to listen perceptibly and perform music from East Asia. Let's have first our short pretest to assess what you have already know about the lesson for today. With your paper and pen, carefully read the statement and choose the correct answer on the box. Write your answer or you may comment your answer on the comment section on our RTB Tarlac FB Live. Item number one. The founder of Chinese music mythology, who at the request of the Yellow Emperor Wang Di, created a system of music that is made of bamboo pipes, which are tuned to the sounds of birds, including the phoenix. Is it Confucius, Wu Sheng, Ling Lun, Simple, Moliwa, or Tempo? If your answer is Ling Lun, you are correct. Item number two. As he thought, beautiful and appropriate music is meant to promote social tranquility. Is it Confucius, Wu Sheng, Ling Lun, Simple, Moliwa, or Tempo? If your answer is Confucius, you are correct. Item number three. The Chinese musical scale or pentatonic scale. Is it Confucius, Wu Sheng, Ling Lun, Simple, Moliwa, or Tempo? If your answer is Wu Sheng, you are correct. Item number four. Ancient Chinese pentatonic scale lends to make blank harmonies, but perhaps to maintain the Confucian norms of simplicity. Is it Confucius, Wu Sheng, Ling Lun? Simple, Moliwa, or Tempo? If your answer is simple, you are correct. And item number five, one of the first Chinese folk songs to become popular abroad. Is it Confucius, Wu Sheng, Ling Lun, Simple, Moliwa, or Tempo? If your answer is Moliwa, you are correct. What is your score in this activity? If you got all the correct answers, very good. You are at advantage for this lesson. If you did not get them all correctly, do not worry because this episode will help you learn more. Let's begin the discussion. East Asian countries are also rich in music. They love to play music as we do. Traditional music is part and parcel of any culture. Traditions and culture differ from one country to another, and so, of course, thus the music. East Asian countries uh, has three general characteristics. The first is linearity, which emphasizes the melody. Harmonies are very rare, and when used at all, are in part of the tension or release of the music. The second is transparency, which focuses on the individual instruments. No matter how big the orchestra is, each instrumental or each instrument has an individual role and is meant to be heard playing its melody. The third is word orientation, which just means a very low of abstraction in music. Traditional Asian music has a title or lyrics, and that is exactly what the piece is about. So with that, let's start with the vocal music of China. China has a long and influential musical tradition based on the philosophy and culture of ancient China. Confucius and Confucian school after him supported 
the correct use and form of music according to their sociological and cosmological conceptions. So to appreciate the music, it helps to understand their ideals of music and their purpose. According to legends, the founder of music in Chinese mythology was Ling Lun, who at the request of the Yellow Emperor Huang Di, created a system of music that is made of bamboo pipes, which are tuned to the sounds of birds, including the phoenix. In this way, he invented the five notes of the ancient Chinese five-tone scale or pentatonic scale, gong, shang, jiao, ji, and yu, also called wu sheng, which is equivalent to one, two, three, five, and six, in numbered musical notation, do, re, mi, so, and la in Western solfeggio. Presented on the screen is the Chinese tonal scale and Western solfeggio, the gong, shang, jiao, ji, and yu of Chinese tonal scale or wusheng is the do, re, mi, so, la in Western solfeggio. Traditional Chinese music isn't meant to be dance or move that would, uh, that would tend to orient people toward bodily sensual and sexual drives. As Confucius thought, beautiful and appropriate music is meant to promote social tranquility or social peace and harmony. Most of the traditional music of the elites use the ancient Chinese pentatonic scale. This scale lends to make simple harmonies, but perhaps to maintain the Confucian norms of simplicity. If music is part of an official ceremonial function, the music is meant to regulate the behavior of the people so that they perform the ritual appropriately and obey authority. In accord with Confucius' idea of music being smoothly continuous, Traditional music generally doesn't have sharp breaks in tempo. However, instead of regular tempo throughout, many pieces feature a regular but smoothly accelerating tempo. The tempo slowly increases towards a finale at the end. This connotes a river gaining speed as it cascades downwards. And this often the rhythmic feature of traditional Chinese music. Over the centuries, three main styles of classical performances were developed that you can enjoy while you on your trip to China. The three general kinds of traditional music that people are most likely to hear nowadays are Chinese opera music meant for theatrical performances, and sam or orchestra music for cultured audiences, and solo instrumental performance. Let's proceed to the famous folk songs of China. First, the folk song Jasmine, Flower, or Moliwa, was composed during the Qing Dynasty, AD 1616 to 1912, and was one of the first Chinese songs to become popular abroad. The song's tune entertains three phrases and depicts the purity of love between young people by highlighting the beauty of jasmine flowers. The jasmine flower song can be found throughout China and there are many regional variations. The, orig the origin of the song was considered a myth until two young Zhu scholars, Zhu Shangsheng and Ni Feng, published an academic article in 2000 detailing the history between the folk song and the young Zhu Diri, an old fashioned type of folk music. The cultural value and popularity of jasmine flower make it a symbol to showcase oriental charms on the world stage. Giacomo Puccini, a world-renowned Italian composer, used the song in his opera Torandot, which tells the story of a beautiful and cold Chinese princess from the Yuan dynasty. The inclusion of the song in the Italian opera's debut in 1926 helped propel it to the global fame. Presented on the screen is a musical notation of the Chinese folk song Moliwa. This folk song 
has many variations in China. Originally, the composition is in 4-4 four, four time signature. But today, we will use the song in cut time or 2-2 two, two time signature and it's in the key of C major. Let us listen to the melody of this Chinese folk song, Moliwa. Now, before we sing Moliwa, let us read first the lyrics. Moliwa, how ye do me, li de mo li wa. How ye do me, li de mo li wa. Fan fang me, li man jia, yu shang yu bai ren ren kwa. Rang wo lai, jang ni shai sha, song ge bie ren jia, moliwa ya moliwa. In English translation, Moliwa, what a beautiful jasmine flower, what a beautiful jasmine flower, sweet smelling beautiful stems full of buds, fragrant and white, everyone praises, let me pluck you down, give to someone's family, jasmine flower, oh jasmine flower. Now, I will sing, the fir I will sing first the famous Chinese folk song Moliwa twice, afterwards, we will sing all together. you <laughs> All together, let us sing the Moliwa. How you do me, the Moliwa? How you do me, the Moliwa? Fen Pang Mei Li Man Jia Yu Shang Yu Bai Ren Ren Kwa Rang Wo Lai Jang Ni Zai Sha Song Ye Bie Ren Jia Ho Li Wa Ya Ho Li Wa Great job student! Do you want more? Alright! Let's proceed to the next Chinese folk song. The traditional Chinese folk song, Ai Hayo, is used as a blessing for a bountiful harvest and a good year. Presented on the screen is the musical notation of the Chinese folk song, Ai Hayo. The folk song is in 4-4 time signature and it's in the key of D major. Let us listen to the melody of Chinese folk song, Ai Hayo. Before we sing Ai Hayo, let us read first the lyrics. Ai Hayo, Ai Hayo, Ai Hayo Hayo, when he tai yang dai tadi, sin yan an yi jing dao. Jia jia sin fu nong tian, hao shou chong. An English translation, Ai Hayo, Ai Hayo, 
I Hayo Hayo, warm sun shining on the earth. The new year has been birthed. Now, we wish you cheer and to have a good year. Now, I will sing first the Chinese folk song I Hayo in a cappella. Afterwards, we will sing all together. I Hayo, I Hayo. I hayo hayo I hayo I hayo I hayo hayo When he tai yang dao ta li Sin yan an yi jing dao Jia jia sin fu nong Shan hao shou chong All together I ha yong, I ha yong, I ha yo ha yo. I ha yo, I ha yo, I ha yo ha yo. When he tai yang dao ta di, sin yan an yi jing dao, ja ja sin fu nong. Chan Hao Shu Chung. Great job, students. You really sang well. And that concludes our discussion about the vocal music of China. Now let us generalize the lesson. The founder of music in Chinese mythology was Ling Lun. Chinese five tone scale or pentatonic scale is also called Wu Sheng. Chinese musical scale to make or Chinese music scale lends to make simple harmonies and generally doesn't have sharp breaks in tempo. Three kinds of traditional Chinese music. One, Chinese opera music for theatrical performances. Two, and some or orchestra music for cultured audiences. And three, solo instrumental performance. Moliwa or Jasmine Flower was one of the first Chinese folk songs to become popular abroad. Giacomo Puccini, a world-renowned Italian composer, used the song in his opera Turandot, which tells the story of a beautiful and cold Chinese princess from Yuan Dynasty. And Ai Hayo is a traditional Chinese folk song used as a blessing for a bountiful harvest and a good year. Now, I want you to pay attention to the first activity in the learning activity sheet. And get ready with your pen because I will assess your learning based on our lesson today. Directions. Read the statements carefully and fill in the missing words with letters. Write your answers on the space provided. Are you ready? Okay, let's begin. Under Chinese music, item number one, as Confucius thought, beautiful and appropriate music is meant to promote blank. Write the missing letters. Item number two. Most of the traditional music of the elites use the ancient Chinese black. Write the missing letters. Item number three. In accord with Confucius' idea, music being blank, traditional music generally doesn't have sharp breaks in tempo. Write the missing letters. Item number four. The blanks slowly increase towards the finale at the end. Write the missing letters. Item number five. Blank music meant for theatrical performances. Write the missing letters. Under famous folk song, item number one, the folk song blank or Moliwa, was one of the first Chinese songs to become popular abroad. Write the missing letters. Item number two. The song's tune entertains three phrases and depicts the blank between young people by highlighting the beauty of the flower. Write the missing letters. Item number three. The cultural value and popularity of jasmine flower make it a symbol to showcase blank on the world stage. Write the missing letters. Item number four, Giacomo Boccini, a world-renowned Italian composer, used the song in his opera Black. 
write the missing letters. Item number five, blank is the traditional Chinese song of a beautifully gentle and lyrical melody. Write the missing letters. Now we will check your answer. Under Chinese music, item number one, as Confucius thought, beautiful and appropriate music is meant to promote social tranquility. Item number two, most of the traditional music of the elites use the ancient Chinese pentatonic scale. Item number three, in accord with the Confucius idea of music being smoothly continuous, traditional music generally doesn't have sharp breaks in tempo. Item number four, the tempo slowly increases towards a finale at the end. Item number five, Chinese opera music meant to or meant for theatrical performances. And under famous folk song item number one, the folk song Jasmine Flower or Moliwa was one of the first Chinese songs to become popular abroad. And item number two, the song's tune entertains three phrases and depicts the purity of love between young people by highlighting the beauty of the flower. And item number three, the cultural value of popularity of Jasmine Flower make it a symbol to showcase oriental charms on the world stage. Item number four, Giacomo Puccini, a world-renowned Italian composer, used the song in his opera Turandot. The item number, and item number five, Moliwa, is a traditional Chinese song of a beautifully gentle and lyrical melody. I know that you did great in your short activity, and before we end this episode, let me remind you about your performance task in Music 8. Directions, choose one from the vocal music of China and prepare a short video presentation of your singing performance and send a soft copy of your performance to your MAPI teacher. For the rubrics of your performance, we have timbre, pitch, rhythm, accuracy, and expression. Dear grade 8 learners, if you have questions and clarifications in our lesson, you can send your questions on my Facebook Messenger. Just search Michael Carunia Garcia, or you may ask your MAPI teacher. For now, please like and share our Facebook page and watch us live on Facebook RTB Tarlac Channel 26. 25 minutes of appreciating the vocal music of China has been concluded. I hope you learned a lot today. I hope all of you had a great time and enjoyed our lesson. That's all for today. Once again, I am Sir Michael C. Garcia, your music grade 8 anchor teacher. Until next time. Saan mang bahagi ng Pilipinas? Sa saan mang bahagi ng mundo? A ano mang uri ng pamumuhay? Kabahagi mo! Kabahagi mo! Radio Pilipino! Radio Pilipino! Sumasahim papawid sa DWPR 1296 Dagupa DZTC 828 Tarlac DZLT 1188 Lucena DZYM 1539 Mindoro DWRL 1080 Legaspi DWRN 657 Naga DZ DYRB 540 Cebu DYRL 1035 Bacolo DYRL 1134 Dumaguete DXCO 1044 Cagayan de Oro DXGS 765 General Santo DXOC 1494 Osami DXOW 981 Davao At Radio Pilipino Podcast Center Manila Ito ang kabahagi mo Radio Pilipino Napapakinggan on air On air And online On Sa buong mundo Sa pamamagitan ng www.radiopilipino.com Radiopilipino.com e Impormasyong may kalidad At serbisyong may halaga Kasama Katuwa Kapinoy Kabahagi mo Kabahagi mo Radio Pilipino Radio Pilipino Upang matugunan ang mga kinakaharap na pagsubok ng mga guro at mag-aaral sa gitna ng kasalukuyang pandemya, nagsanib tulong sina Congressman Charlie Cojuanco ng unang distrito ng Tarlac. 
DepEd Region 3 Regional Director, Dr. May B. Eklar, at Talak Schools Division Superintendent, Dr. Ronaldo Poson, para sa isang napapanahong proyekto na tinaguri ang Project Shine Aral Tarlakenyo. Ang mga mag-aaral ng Grade 4 at Grade 5, ganun din ang Grades 8 and 9 sa buong probinsya ng Tarlac, kasalukuyang sumasa ilalim sa radio-based instruction. Katuwang ang himpilang DZTZ 828 kHz AM at RTV Tarlac, Channel 26. Ang Tarlac po nangunguna po ngayon pagdating po sa radio-based instruction. Marami pong humahanga sa atin. I'm very happy this station Itong DCTC could reach the whole of Region 3. Hindi natin alam. We are contributing. We are creating a very big dent in the history of Philippine education. And I am proud. I am here in Tarlac. This is the noble cause of education in which you and I, without you knowing it, we are bound to do. natin na Project Shine is a natural consequence dahil sa nangyari sa buong mundo. Let's continue to work together. I think it's very Filipino to practice uh, bayanihan in anything or most of the things that we do. And this is a manifestation of that. No? We have private sector, we have DepEd, we have local government, all working together. And I hope the parents of some of these children, especially the parents that did not graduate from school or hindi nakapag-aral nung sila ay bata, eh sana naman gamitin na nila itong opportunity na mag-schooling na rin sila kasama ng mga bat anak nila para mag-banding pati ang mga magulang sa mga bata. I look at this as doing God's work. Diba? So if you do God's work, it feels right. It's righteous. It's for good, not for evil. Good morning and uh, happy uh, learning uh, grade 4. Uh, welcome to Adal Tarlac Henyo here on RTV Tarlac Channel 26. Simulcast over DZDZ 828. Radio Pilipino Tarla. I am Teacher Mercy Pacheco Bognot. This is Alistair Aidatu. I am Marie Josephine B. Andrade. I am Teacher Princess Marie M. Duenas. And I will be your teacher broadcaster for today. Another journey of learning. This is Adal Tarlacenio here on RTV Tarlac Channel 26. Simulcast over DZTZ 828 Radio Pilipino Tarlac. We are also broadcasting live at Converge Cable Channel 100. I am Ma'am Sara May Aryohenio broadcasting live here in San Jose Tarlac. And it is my pleasure to be with you in this exciting learning journey in English 9. Be prepared to an exciting way of learning, even at the comfort of your homes. Make sure you are seated comfortably, geared with your paper, pen, learning activity sheet, and of course, with a ready mind. At this point, get your printed learning activity sheet in English 9. Today, we will discuss about making connections between text to particular social issues, concerns, or dispositions in life. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to identify the three types of connections and to make connections between text to particular social issues, concerns, or dispositions in life. In this episode, 
we will go through four activities. Activity one, let us begin. Activity two, let us take note. Activity three, let us apply. And for your post viewing and listening task, we have activity four, let us strengthen. Before we proceed with today's lesson, let's have activity one, let us begin. Read the directions with me. Read the first stanza of the poem, If, by Rudyard Kipling. Choose one among the emoticons flash on screen to reflect your feelings after reading it. Then, explain the reason behind your chosen emoticon. Are you ready? Let us begin. Let us now read the first stanza of the poem, If, by Rudyard Kipling. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting or being lied about, don't deal in lies. Or being hated, don't give way to hating. And yet, don't look too good, nor talk too wise. The persona in the first stanza tells the readers to exercise the act of self-control and self-restraint. The power of patience and self-confidence, and the art and beauty of waiting, and not to hate other people, and not to lie to other people. Now, how did you feel after reading the poem with me? Choose one among the flash emoticons to express your feelings about it. You may type your answers in the comment section. Maybe some of you chose the happy face or the heart emoticon be because you felt happy or glad. Others answered the sad face because it reminded you of something that makes you sad. Or maybe... You chose the thumbs up sign because you agree to the message of the poem. You felt those emotions because you somehow relate to the message of the stanza that we just had. Activity 1 is related to our topic for today. And it's all about making connections between text to particular social issues, concerns, or dispositions in life. Reading comprehension is a vital skill to improve communication skills. One relevant skill that you must learn is making connections. How you are able to relate yourself to the materials you are exposed to affects your understanding of their contents, meanings, and themes. Now, let us try to unlock and discover the important notes about our topic for today by accomplishing activity two, let us take note. Read the directions with me. Read the following statements carefully to identify whether the statements are true or false. Put a happy face if the statement is true and a sad face if the statement is false. Are you excited? Let us begin. For item one, there are three types of connections for the readers to comprehend text better. You have five seconds to answer. Is it a happy face or a sad face? For our item one, if your answer is a happy face, you are right. This statement is true. There are three types of connections. First, we have text-to-self connections, second, text-to-text -text connections, and third, text-to-world connections. Now, let's move on to item two. For item two, text-to-self connections are personal connections that the reader makes between himself and the selection he is dealing with. Choose between a happy face and a sad face. You have five seconds. For item two, if your answer is a happy face, 
you got it right. In text-to-self connections, the reader makes personal connections between himself and the material he is reading. The reader's previous personal experiences, opinions, and emotions are somewhat similar to what he is reading. To help you in making text-to-self connections between yourself and the material, you may ask yourself of the following questions. What does this remind me of in my life? How is this similar to my life? How is this different from my life? Another is, has something like this happened to me? And how does this relate to my life? That's it for text-to-self connections. Let's proceed to item three. In the lines, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. Triumph means success and disaster means failure. You have five seconds. All right, if you commented a happy face, you are correct. Now, try to make connections between yourself and these particular lines. Let's read the second stanza of the poem, If. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same, if you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to broken, and stoop and build them up with worn-out tools. In this stanza, it tells the reader that if he achieves success or experiences failure, he should treat them equally. He neither should dwell in success if he achieves it, and nor should he let himself collapse if he faces failure. Now, try to make connections between yourself and these lines of the second stanza. Ask yourself the questions, how does this remind me of in my life? Or how is this similar to my life? Maybe some of you would answer, ah, I can relate to these lines because this is just like me. If I experience failure, I consider it as a lesson in life. And I never give up. That is text to self connections. You always try to relate yourself and your experiences to the material you are dealing with. Now, let's have our item four. Are you ready? For item four, text-to-text -text connections are connections where a reader relates one material to another that is not related to the text at hand. Should it be a happy face or a sad face? Comment your answers. All right, if you commented the sad face, you are correct. This is a false statement because text-to-text -text connections are connections where a reader relates one material to another that he already read or already come across with. Text might be from a similar author, same theme, or topic, same genre, and the like. To help you make connections between the text you are reading and another material you read before, the following questions can be asked. What does this remind me of in another book I've read? How is this text similar to the other things I have read? How is this different from other books I've read? And have I read about something like this before? That is all about text-to-text -text connections. Now, let's have item five. Be ready. For item five, the lines, and so hold on when there is nothing in you, except the wheel which says to them, hold on. Demonstrate the art of letting go and giving up. A happy face or a sad face? Comment your answers. Great! 
If your answer is a sad face, you are right. This is a false statement because these lines from the third stanza of, of the poem, if, are not about letting go or giving up. These lines are about perseverance and the courage to start again. Later on, let's try to make text-to-text -text connections. But before that, let's first read the third stanza of the poem, If. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and twist it on one turn of pitch and toss and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breath a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn after, after they are gone and so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. These lines from the third stanza tell the reader that he should start trying again after failure and must not give up. He should stay strong to move forward in life despite the obstacles along the way. Now, try to make connections between a text or any reading material that you already read to this particular lines of the poem. You may ask the questions we discussed a while ago. Can you think of any material that you already come across with, which is somehow related to these lines of the poem? All right, I'll give you an example. These lines or the whole poem itself are somehow related to the Analects by Confucius. Why? Because if by Rudyard Kipling, and the Analects by Confucius are somewhat similar to each other, especially in terms of theme. These two readings are all about morality and the way to be a worthy human being. These are all about lessons on how to handle pain, joy, failure, and success. That is text-to-text -text connections. Can you name other reading materials which are somehow related to this poem? Very good. I know you have more great answers. Now, let's move on to item 6. For item 6, text-to-world connections are greater connections that the reader brings to a reading situation, including real-life issues and our perception of the world. Is this an item a happy face or a sad face? Very good. If your answer is a happy face, that is correct. In text to world connections, the reader is making a connection between what the material he is reading and the current issues and happenings of the world because we have various sources of learning things beyond personal experiences like television, radio, magazines, movies, and others. To make text-to-world connections, the following questions can be asked. What does this remind me of in the real world? How is this text similar to things happening in real world? How is this different from things happening in real world? Or how does this part relate to the world around me? That is all about text-to-world connections. Now, let's have our last item. Are you ready? For item 7, the lines, If you can feel the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it, mean to seize every moment of your life. Is this item a happy face or a sad face? Comment down below. Very good. If your answer is a happy face, that is correct. Now, try to make connections between this particular lines to the issues or reality of the world. Let's read the fourth stanza of the poem, If. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings nor lose the common touch. If neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, 
If all men count with you, but none too much. If you can feel the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run. Yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And, which is more, you'll be a man, my son. In this lines of the last stanza of the poem, it tells the reader to cherish every moment of life. It asks the reader to make good use of his time. And if he asks, upon the given advice, the world and everything herein will belong to him. Now, try to make connections between these lines of the last stanza to the reality of the world. You may ask the questions we discussed a while ago. All right, this lines or the whole poem itself reflects reality of life. In this world, life is so short. Time flies so fast. And change is inevitable. Especially, we have been experiencing a pandemic brought by COVID-19. We must always cherish our lives and live it to the fullest. The poem provides traditional advice to live with good character, dignity, and integrity. That is all about Text to World Connections. Congratulations! Always remember that we have three types of connections, which are text to self, text to text, and text to world connections. Now that we are done with the lesson, it's time to check what you have learned. Make sure to apply all the concepts that we learn in our discussion. Let's put your learnings into action by accomplishing the following activities. You can do it. Ready? Go to Activity 3, entitled, Let us apply on your learning activity sheets. Read the directions with me. Read each item carefully. Choose the letter of the correct answer and write your answers on the space provided before each number. Number 1. Which of the following statements is not true about making text connections? A. In text-to-self connections, the reader's emotions are somewhat similar to the ones present in the material. B. In text-to-text -text connections, the text might be from a similar author, same theme, or same topic, same genre, and the like. C. The question, how is this text similar to the things happening in real world, can be asked when applying text-to-self connections. Or letter D. Text-to-world connections are the greater connections that a reader brings to a reading situation, including real-life issues and our perception of the world. I'll give you five seconds to answer. If your answer is letter C, you are correct. Because the question, how is this text similar to the things happening in real world, can be asked when applying text-to-world connections and not text-to-self connections. Next item, number two. Based on the following lines, what is your conclusion about the speaker's values? If you can wait and not be tired by waiting or being lied about, don't deal in lies. A. The speaker values curiosity and creativity. B. The speaker values patience and honesty. C. The speaker values good looks and political debates. And letter D. The speaker values the opinions of other people. What is the answer? If your answer is letter B, you are correct. In this lines of the first stanza of the poem, the speaker values patience and honesty. Item number three, what is the meaning of the line, if you can make one heap of all your winnings and raise it on one third of pitch and thaws and lose and start again at your beginnings? A, when you take a risk and lose everything, start over. B, don't be a sore, lo sore loser. C. Share your award with someone who lost in the game. Or letter D. 
You should avoid games for you not to be a loser. What is the answer? All right, the correct answer is letter A. When you take a risk and lose everything, start over is the meaning of the said lines. And let's move on to our fourth and fifth items. For our fourth and fifth items, we'll have the short poem, Fragile Egg by Jim. Let's read it all together. Later on, you'll answer questions about it. Fragile Egg by Jim. Fragile egg the world has cracked. For oil and gas we've all been fracked. Gentle fixes won't get it done. Ice melts, water bleeds. Nowhere to run from warming sun. Now for number four. What is the main concern being conveyed in the short poem? A. Calamity B. Pollution C. Deforestation or letter D. Global Warming what is the answer? All right, the correct answer is letter D, global warming. From the lines, ice melts, water bleeds, nowhere to run from warming sun. We could tell that this is all about changes in the environment brought by global warming. And let's have the last item. Are you ready? Number five, what does the speaker desire to emphasize in the poem? A, the earth is no longer prone to extinction for damage can be fixed easily. B, the species are not affected by the melting of ice and the warming of sun. C, all the species have somewhere to run aside from the earth. And letter D, the increase of Earth's average temperature and the damage of the resources are mainly due to humans' harmful activities. What is the answer? All right, if your answer is letter D, you are correct. The persona in the poem wants to emphasize that the increase of the Earth's average temperature and the damage of the resources are mainly due to the humans' harmful activities. Congratulations! It's really a job well done. You properly applied what you learned from our discussion. Another chapter in this learning journey has been unlocked. Now, apply what you've learned through more complex yet interesting tasks. For activity 4, let us strengthen. I'll give you an activity that you'll accomplish after watching and listening to this episode. Apply your learnings to accomplish your tasks. Are you ready? For your activity 4, let us strengthen. Let's read the directions together. Read the poem, How Do I Love Thee? or the Sonnet 43 by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Make connections between the text to particular social issues, concerns, or dispositions in real life. Accomplish this by writing an essay. Choose among the three types of connections in writing your essay and be guided by the provided rubrics in your learning activity sheets. Now, this is the poem, How Do I Love Thee? or the Sonnet 43 by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. This is also included in the last part of your learning activity sheets. Indeed, you've done a great job today, grade nine learners. I hope that you'll be able to apply what you learn in this episode. Like Vincent Van Gogh said, what is done in love is done well. So love life and cherish every moment of it always serving you with fun ways of learning together with Adal Tarlac Henyo here on RTV Tarlac Channel 26 simulcast over DZTZ 828 Radio Pilipino Tarlac. This is Ma'am Sara May Aryo Henyo. It has always been a great time learning with you. Na ba? Ang mental health ay isang mahalagang bahagi ng ating pangkabuoang kalusugan. Walang health kung walang mental health. 
Kaya naman maglaan ng oras para sa mga hobbies, kumustahin ng mga mahal sa buhay, at huwag kalimutang ipahinga ang utak. Ngayong panahon ng pandemya, make sure to care for yourself and care for others para sa isang healthy Pilipinas. Tumawag sa mga numerong ito. Paalala mula sa Department of Health. Sa ngalan ng pag-ibig. Pangakong ikaw lang. Walang hindi gagawin. Walang hindi hahamakin. Paulit-ulit, araw-araw ikaw, ikaw pa rin. rin. For richer, for poorer, in, in sickness, sickness and, and in, health. in health. Kung mahal mo sila, magpa-booster ka. Promise. X-Men. Ligtas para, para sa lahat. Kumusta mga bilyo kong tagapakinig? Nagbabalik ang inyong paaralang panghipotawid. Aral Tarlac Henyo. Sa RTV Tarlac. Channel 26. At sa bayang naririnig sa DZPC 828, Radyo Pilipino Tarla. Ayunin ay napapanood sa FB Live ng RTV Tarla Channel 26. Sumasahim pa pagwin mula sa bayan ng Pura Tarla. Mula sa bayan ng San Clemente. Mula rito sa Puro Elementary School Pura Tarla. Sa bayan ng Kapas Tarla. Ako ang inyong guro. na maghahatid sa inyo ng makabuluhang pagtalakay sa ating karalini. Alam nyo ba na ang gitnang luson ay tinaguri ang banga ng bigas ng bayan at kamalig ng palay ng Pilipinas dahil dito nagbumula ang malaking produksyon ng bigas sa ating bansa. Ito ay binubuo ng mga lalawigan ng Aurora, Pataan, Pampanga, Nueva Ecija, Zambales at Tarlac. Pagalihin natin manood ng Araw Tarlac Henyo, lunes hanggang biyernes, alas 8.30 ng umaga hanggang alas 5.30 ng hapon. Ako si Binibining Pia Isrin Kapiral, ang inyong teacher broadcaster sa Araling Panlipunan dito sa Project Shine Araw Tarlac Henyo. Lagi nating tandaan ang pag-aaral ng Araling Panlipunan ay tungo sa daan ng pagiging makajos. makakalikasan, makatao, at makabansa. Aral Tarlacenyo ng Schools Division of Tarlac Province. Hatid sa inyo ng RTV Tarlac Channel 26 at DZTC 828 Radio Pilipino Tarlac. Isang malusog at ligtas na hapon, mga kabataang Tarlacenyo. Narito na naman tayo, nagsisikap at nagpupunyagi na maging makajos, makatao, makakalikasan at makabansa. Kumusta na kayo mga ginigilim kong grade 9 eco learners? Ang aking pagbati at paghanga sa inyong masidhing pagpupunyagi sa patuloy na pag-aaral sa himpapawid upang matuto sa kabila ng hamon ng pagkakataon ang COVID-19 pandemic. Ako ang inyong guro sa Araling Palipunan 9, ginoong Harold G. Giam, upang samahan at gabayan kayong maunawaan ang nilalaman ng ating aralin na konsepto ng demand at batas ng demand. Bago pa man tayo magsimula sa ating talakayan, narito ang ilan sa ating mga paalaala. Siguraduhin nasa maayos kayong lugar at komportable at napapanood at napapakinggan ang ating live broadcast. Matanong ko lang, kumain at nagmeryenda na ba kayo? 
Mabuti naman dahil nararapat lamang na may laman ang inyong mga tiyan upang mas maging alerto ang inyong pag-iisip at maayos na maunawaan ang ating aralin sa araw na ito. Sa puntong ito, nais kong kunin ninyo ang inyong module sa Araling Panlipunan para sa unang linggo ng ikalawang markahan. Ang ating paksang aralin ay patungkol sa konsepto ng demand at batas ng demand. Bago tayo magsimula sa ating paksa ngayong araw na ito, ay alalahanin muna natin ang ating naging aralin noong nakaraang linggo. Matanong ko lang, natatandaan pa ba ninyo? Magaling! Ating tinalakay ang karapatan at tungkulin ng mamimili. Maari ba ninyong tukuyin ang mga ito? Mahusay! Meron tayong walong karapatan ng mamimili at mayroon naman tayong limang tungkulin ng mga mamimili. Isa-isayin natin ang karapatan ng mga mamimili. Una, karapatan na magkaroon ng pangunahing pangangailangan. Ikalawa, karapatan sa kaligtasan. Ikatlo, karapatan sa patalastasan. Ikaapat, karapatan sa pagpili. Ikalima, karapatang dinggin. Ika-anim, karapatang bayaran at tumbasan ang anumang kapinsalaan. Ika-pito, karapatan sa pagtuturo tungkol sa pagiging matalinong mamimili. At ikawalo, karapatan sa malinis na kapaligran. Yun ang walong karapatan ng mamimili na tinalakay noong nakaraang linggo. Mula naman sa tungkulin ng mga mamimili, meron tayong mapanuring kamalayan, pagkilos, pagmamalasakit na panlipunan, kamalayan sa kapaligiran, at pagkakaisa. Ang kagawaran ng kalakalan at industriya o ang tinatawag nating Department of Trade and Industry ang ahensya ng pamahalaan na siyang inatasan upang itaguyod ang mga karapatan at tungkulin ng mga mamimili. Tungkulin din nitong palawigin ang, kalak ang kalakalan at industriya ng bansa sa pamamagitan ng paglikha ng mga bagong hanap buhay at magbigay kita sa mga Pilipino. At ngayon, sa palagay ko, ay handa ka na sa ating bagong paksa para sa araw na ito. Inaasahan na sa pagtatapos ng aralin na ito ay inyong maipaliliwanag ang konsepto ng demand at batas ng demand. Di ba mga grade 9 eco learners? Napaka-interesting ng ating um, paksa para sa araw na ito. Sa lahat ng mga magulang at mga mag-aaral sa ikasyam na baitang na nakikinig sa ating broadcast, kung kayo ay may katanungan o nais linawin ukol sa ating paksa ngayong araw, maari kayong magbigay ng mensahe sa aking Um, Facebook uh, Messenger, Harold G. Giam, tumawag o mag-text sa, sa numerong ito, 0917-770-8476. Uulitin ko, ang numerong maari niyong tawagan ay 0917-770-8476. At ang aking Facebook ay Harold Giam. Bago tayo magsimula sa ating paksang aralin, ating subukin ang inyong paunang kaalaman sa ating paksa. Ihanda ang inyong papel at ballpen at piliin ang pinakaangkop na sagot sa aking mga katanungan. Handa ka na ba? Magaling, alam ko na lagi kayong ready. Unang tanong, ano ang tawag sa batayan sa pagpapasya kung gaano karaming produkto o paglilingkod ang bibilhin? Letter A, batas ng negosyo. Letter B, batas ng demand. Letter C, batas ng konsumerismo. O letter D, batas ng pangangailangan. Ang tamang sagot ay, magaling, letter B, batas ng demand. Ikalawang tanong, ano ang tawag sa dami ng kalakal 
na handang bilhin ng mga mamimili sa isang takdang panahon. Letter A, timbang. Letter B, supply. Letter C, demand. O letter D, budget. Kung ang inyong sagot ay letter C, magaling. Tama ang inyong sagot. Ikatlong tanong, ano ang tawag sa mekanismo kung saan nagtatagpo ang nagbibenta at namimili upang magkaroon ng bentahan? Letter A, pamilihan. Letter B, sanglaan. Letter C, lansangan. O letter D, pasyalan. Ang tamang sagot ay tumpak. Letter A, pamilihan. Dumako tayo sa ikaapat na tanong. Saan pinoproseso ang mga produkto upang maipagbili ng mga negosyante? Letter A, bahay kalakal. Letter B, tindahan. Letter C, bodega. O letter D, daungan. Tignan pa ang inyong mga sagot. Letter? Okay, magaling. Letter A, bahay kalakal. Ikalimang tanong. Simula nang magsagawa ng community quarantine sa probinsya ng Tarlac dahil sa pandemikong COVID-19, alin sa mga sumusunod na produkto ang naging mababa ang demand kumpara sa kasabay sa panahong wala pang pandemiko? Ito ba ay letter A, alcohol? Letter B, vitamina? Letter C, face mask? O letter D, milk tea? Alam ko, alam na alam nyo to. Ang tamang sagot ay letter D, milk tea. Ilan ang inyong mga score? Huwag mag-alala yung mga hindi naka-perfect score dahil may chance pa kayong bumawi sa susunod. Samantala, tayo nang magsimula sa ating talakayan. Naitaw- naitanong mo na ba sa iyong sarili kung paano kung paano mo matutugunan ang mga pangangailangan mo? Saan mo kaya makukuha ang mga ito? Sa puntong ito, mahalagang pag-usapan ang apat na pangunahing katanungang pang-ekonomiko. Una, ano-ano ang produktong ipoproduce? Ikalawa, gaano karami ang ipoproduce o li- lilikhain? Ikatlo, paano ito ipoproduce? At ikaapat, para kanino ito ipoproduce? Ang mga katanungang ito o ang mga katanungang pang ek- pang ekonomikong ito ang pinagmulan kung bakit may konsepto tayong tinatawag na demand. Ang demand ay tumutukoy sa dami ng produkto at serbisyo na nais bilhin sa isang takdang presyo at lugar. May demand ang isang produkto at paglilingkod kapag nakapagbibigay ito ng kasiyahan o nakatutugon sa isang pangangailangan. Ang mga binibili natin tulad ng ayan, pagkain, damit, mga personal na gamit gaya ng cellphone at iba pang gadget ay mga halimbawa ng demand. Napakahalagang batayan sa pagpili o sa pagbili ng isang pangangailangan ang presyo. Bumibili tayo depende sa kakayahan natin o sa budget na mayroon tayo. Kaya napakahalaga na matutuhan o matutunan natin ang wastong pagbabudget upang matugunan natin ang pang-araw-araw na demand para sa mga pangangailangan natin. Pagkatapos sa konsepto ng demand, dumako naman tayo kung ano ba ang tinatawag natin na konsepto sa batas ng demand. Isinasaad ng batas ng demand na magkasalungat o inverse na ugnayan ang presyo sa quantity demanded ng isang produkto. Sabi nga dito, sa batas ng demand, kapag tumaas ang presyo, bumababa ang dami ng gusto at kayang bilhin, at kapag bumaba ang presyo, tataas naman ang dami ng gusto 
at kayang bilhin o ang tinatawag natin na Citeris Paribus. Ang iba, ang, ang ibig sabihin ng Citeris Paribus ay ipinagpapalagay na ang presyo lamang ang salik na nakaaapekto sa pagbabago ng quantity demanded habang ang ibang salik ay hindi nagbabago o nakakaapekto rito. Ayon pa sa batas ng demand, kapag kayo ng iyong pamilya ay magdedesisyon na bumili ng isang produkto o serbisyo, ang presyo ang inyong pangunahing pinagbabatayan. Sa bawat pagbili mo sa tindahan, itinatanong mo muna ang presyo bago ka magdesisyon kung ilan ang iyong bibilhin. ba? Diba? Um, sa bawat pagbili natin, lagi natin tinatanong or pag namimili tayo sa mga, um, sa mga malls o pag namamasyal tayo, ang unang-unang lagi natin tinitignan at ang unang laging tinatanong natin ay ang presyo. Magkano ba ang produkto o magkano ba ang um, produkto na kanilang ibinibenta? So ayan, natalakay natin ang konsepto ng demand at batas ng demand. Dito na muna nagtatapos ang ating talakayan patungkol sa konsepto ng demand at batas ng demand. Pero para makasiguro ako na kayo ay talagang nakinig at naunawaan ang ating talakayan, ay magkakaroon tayo ng maikling gawain. Ihanda ang inyong ballpen at sagutang papel. Para sa panuto, piliin ang pinakatamang sagot at isulat sa iyong sagutang papel. Sa mga nanonood naman sa ating Facebook Live, ilagay niyo lamang sa comment section ang inyong mga kasagutan. At makikita natin kung talagang nakuha ninyo ang mga konsepto ng demand at batas ng demand. Una, ang batayan sa pagpapasya kung gaano karaming produkto o paglilingkod ang bibilhin ay tinatawag na batas ng negosyo, batas ng demand, batas ng konsumerismo, batas ng pangangailangan. Uulitin ko, letter A, batas ng negosyo, letter B, batas ng demand, letter C, batas ng konsumerismo, at letter D, batas ng pangangailangan. Number two, sa panahon ngayon ng pandemya, ito ang paraan upang makatulong ang mga mamamayan upang hindi na maghintay ng tulong sa gobyerno. Letter A, manatili sa ating sariling tahanan. Letter B, maghintay ng ayuda galing sa gobyerno. Letter C, magtanim ng mga gulay at iba pang masustansyang pagkain. Letter D, maghintay ng tamang panahon upang makabalik sa trabaho. Ulitin ko, letter A, manatili sa sariling tahanan. Letter B, maghintay ng ayuda galing sa gobyerno. Letter C, magtanim ng mga gulay at iba pang masustansyang pagkain. At letter D, maghintay ng tamang panahon upang makabalik sa trabaho. Ikatlong tanong, sa economics, sila ang may tungkuling pag-aralan kung paano matutugunan ang walang katapusang pangangailangan ng tao. Ito ba'y letter A, pamahalaan? Letter B, mamimili? Letter C, producer? Letter D, consumer? Uulitin ko. Letter A, pamahalaan? Letter B, mamimili? Letter C, producer. At letter D, consumer. Mukhang nag enjoy ata ang ating mga eco, grade 9 eco learners sa pagsagot nila um, sa aking mga katanungan. Dumako tayo sa ikaapat na tanong. Ang dami ng kalakal na handang bilhin ng mga mamimili sa isang takdang panahon at tiyak na lugar ay letter A, timbang. Letter B, supply. Letter C, demand. 
At letter D, budget. Uulitin ko. Letter A, timbang. Letter B, supply. Letter C, demand. At letter D, budget. At pinakahuling tanong, number five, isang mekanismo kung saan nagtatagpo ang nagbibenta at namimili upang magkaroon ng bentahan ay ang letter A, pamilihan. Letter B, sanglaan. Letter C, lansangan. O letter D, pasyalan. Ngayon, ay atin nang iwasto ang inyong mga kasagutan. Tingnan nga natin, para sa number one, ang tamang sagot ay letter B, batas ng demand. Ito ang pagpapasya kung gaano karaming produkto o paglilingkod ang bibilhin. Para naman sa number two, letter C, tama, magtanim na lamang ng mga gulay at iba pang masustansyang pagkain habang naghihintay tayo ng tulong na manggagaling sa ating gobyerno. Number three, Letter C, producer. Tungkulin nila na pag-aralan at tugunan ang walang katapusang pangangailangan ng tao. Para naman sa number four, letter C, tama. Demand. Ito ang dami ng kalakal na handang bilhin ng mga mamimili sa isang takdang panahon at tiyak na lugar. At para sa number five, letter A, pamilihan. Ito ang lugar kung saan nagtatagpo ang nagbibenta at mamimili o namimili. Ilan ang nakuha ninyong score? 5, 4, 3? Magaling! Masaya ako dahil sa inyong masigasig na pag-aaral. Bibigyan ko muna kayo ng refleksyon para sa ating talakayan. At bago doon, tignan muna natin kung ano ba, ano pa ang inyong mga kakayahan sa inyong pagsagot? Para sa ating sa susunod na talakayan ay ating susuriin ang demand schedule, demand curve, at demand function. Ngunit bago yun, sagutin ang gawain sa pahina 13 ng inyong module na may pamagat na demand reading. Ang panuto ay kopyahin ang talahan na yan sa isang malinis na band paper. Lagyan ng check ang column ng sangayon kung naniniwala ka na tama ang pahayag ukol sa konsepto ng demand at lagyan ng X ang column ng hindi sangayon kung hindi ka naniniwala. Bago tayo magtapos sa ating aralin, nais ko lamang bigyan kayo ng refleksyon sa ating tinalakay. Ang demand ay tumutukoy sa dami ng produkto at serbisyo na kaya at handang bilhin ng mga mamimili sa alternatibong presyo sa isang takdang panahon. Ang presyo ay may malaking impluensya sa pagtatakda ng demand ng mga mamimili. Ito ang pangunahing salik na nakapagpapabago ng demand ng mamimili. Ang demand ay may tatakda kung ang mamimili ay may kakayahan at kagustuhan na bilhin ang isang produkto at serbisyo. Ang batas ng demand ay isa sa mga pangunahing batayan sa pagsusuri ng demand. Ayon dito, kapag mababa ang presyo ng isang produkto, maraming mamimili ang magkakaroon ng kakayahan o nahis bilhin iyon. Kapag mataas naman ang presyo, kakaunti lamang ang may kakayahan o nais bumili. Kung kaya ang presyo ng bilihin ay nakabatay sa batas ng demand. Halimbawa nito ay ang pagtaas at pagbaba ng presyo ng bigas sa palengke. Para sa ibinigay kong um, takdang aralin, um, dito naman, maari nyong kunan ng larawan gamit ang inyong cellphone, ang inyong gawain, at isumiti ito sa Facebook Messenger sa gu ng inyong guro sa AP. Sa mga wala namang access sa internet, maaring ipasa ang inyong ginawa activity sa inyong paaralan o sa barangay hall sa, sa tatapdang 
pagsauli at pagkuha ng module. Isang paalala lamang, ang inyong mga magulang o guardian lamang ang maaring magtungo sa pagpasa ng mga sinagotang gawain. Sila din ay inaasahang sumunod sa ating mga health protocols gaya ng pagsuot ng face mask, face shield, paghuhugas ng kamay, at physical distancing. Inaasahan ko na kayo'y natuto sa ating talakayan para sa araw na ito. Muli, ako ang inyong guro sa Araling Palipunan 9, ginoong Harold Gigiam na nagsasabing ang pag-aaral ng Araling Palipunan ay daan sa pagiging makajos, makatao, makakalikasan, at makabansa. Lucena, 88.3 Legaspi, 96.1 Surigao, 95.9 Butua, 92.1 Mindoro, 96.7 Tacloba, 99.3 Valera, 95.1 Puerto Princesa, Palawan. This is your one, your only one, your only, only one, 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 one FM. Gutom ka ba sa impormasyon? May namiss ka bang subject at leksyon? Gusto mo bang alalahanin ang nakaraan o dagdagan ang iyong kaalaman? Lahat yan alamin natin because the professor is in Professor On Air and Online. Kasama si Professor Willie Perry. Isang oras na kaalaman, isang oras na makabuluhan. Professor On Air, mamangha at tumawa sa mga tips at trivia. Sa gabay at tanong, sagot ka rin niya. Professor On Air and Online. Kasama si Professor Willie Perry tuwing Sabado alas 10 hanggang alas 11 ng umaga mapapakinggan sa Radio Pilipino at mapapanood sa RTV Tarla Channel 26 Professor On Air Para sa iyo ano ang COVID-19 Virus Malungkot Pagkawala Pandemia Ito ay isang pahirap Di COVID-19 para kanya kat biligro Isa nga pandemic, makurit nga magka-pandemic Kaya, ma kaya makaradlo kito nga sa kitalimbawa So kato yun ang uh, virus nga nakasunod na ito Delikado ito parte, parte ang mga tao Pandemic, ngayon para kung baga Dapat ito nga distruso Kapagos sa kalibusan Ikaw Paano ka makakatulong? Para makuha natin itong mga pandemic, kinakailangan po uh, protocol, social distancing, nganhin, may face mask. Make sure na itaman yung pre -pre prepare nga food, uh, uh, naka-guideline siyahan cleanliness, tapos yun papalo naman itong social distancing. Okay, so kata akong driver ako, amo, nagtong kami mga barrier para ng motor. Para proteksyon ng gihapon, dire la para kun pati nga tatakon pamilya. Mga tulong nga may iwasan iti COVID-19, iti pamamagitan iti pagsunod ko, iti health protocol kun hanak nga rumwa DJ Balaymi. Saka uh, gagayam ni Peter Amigable, salamat. Tuberculosis Gaano katagal ang gamutan ng TB? Ang tuberculosis treatment ay umaabot ng 6 hanggang 8 buwan na pag-inom ng gamot. Kapag naman ito ay naantala, maaaring umabot ng dalawang taon ang gamutan. Tandaan, ang TB ay hindi na mamana, hindi nakukuha sa pagpapagod, pagpupuyat o pagkatuyo ng pawis sa likod. 
hindi na ipapasa sa paghawak ng gamit ng taong may TB. Hindi na kukuha sa kagat ng lamok. Kaya kung may suspetsa, agad kumonsulta. Libre ito. Maging bahagi ng TB Free Pinas. Konsultayo sa ating mga primary care provider para sa Healthy Pilipinas. Paalala mula sa Department of Health. na ang whale shark ay hindi isang whale? Ang whale shark o butanding ay kinikilalang world's largest fish at tinatawag gentle giants. May sukat itong 12 meters. Maliliit ang ngipin ng butanding, kaya naman planktons o maliliit na hipon at isda lang ang kaya nilang kainin. Simula noong 2011, marami nang nahumaling mag whale shark watching sa Oslo Cebu. Lam nyo na! Yan ang whale shark! How are you today? Hello, everyone. Hello, learners of Tarla. Good morning, Matalino Grade 4 learners. Welcome to Aral Tarla Kenyo. Here on RTV Tarla Channel 26. Simulcast over DCPC. Radio Filipino Tarla. I'm Sir Glenn, your teacher broadcaster. Broadcasting live here at Paniki Tarla. Remotely. Here in Concepcion, Tarlac. Live here at Barangay Pedro El Quines, Mayantok, Tarlac. Broadcasting live from Ramos National High School. Your anchor teacher today for Grade 9 Mathematics. Your partner in education this time of pandemic. Afternoon, dear learners, especially to all grade 9 viewers and listeners. Welcome to RTV Turlap Channel 26. Simulcast over 828 DZTZ Radio Filipino Turlap. This is Project Shine, Aral Tarlakenyo of DepEd Turlap Province. Broadcasting live via Google Meet here in Tarlac City. I am Jenny Marie Bernardino Flores, your teacher broadcaster. It's a beautiful Tuesday afternoon, November 16, 2021. And I will be your guide in understanding our lesson in computer system servicing grade 9. Today, I am hoping that you will enjoy your 25 minutes in exploring the wonderful world of computer. Now, are you ready and excited for much information today? If yes, what are you waiting for? Get your pen and paper, and don't forget your companion of notes in Computer Servicing, Computer System Servicing, Grade 9. Be ready, and let's all learn together. I 
our topic for today is all about the 10 major hardware components of the computer system. Let me repeat, our topic is all about computer hardware. Kaya, sigurado mag -e enjoy tayo. Before we move on, let us review our past lesson. What is it all about? Very good! It is all about the history of computer. Alright, let's try this activity if you still remember about it. I will read the direction. Choose the letter of the correct answers in a sheet of paper. Or you may type your answer in the comment section of our FB page. Here is the first question. What do you call the first earliest manual calculating device? A. Abacus B. Typewriter C. Pascal's Calculator Great job! The answer is A. Abacus Let's proceed to the next question. Who is the first computer programmer? A. Blaise Pascal B. Lady Ada Byron C. Howard I can. Yes, you're right. It's letter B. Lady Ada Byron. Now, for our last question. Who is the father of modern computer? A. Gottfried Leibniz B. Herman Hollerith C. Charles Babbage That's correct! Letter C. Charles Babbage There you have it, class, for the history of computer. Now, I want you to open your compendium of notes in TLE9 Computer Systems Servicing, Quarter 2, on page 20. So let's continue our lesson. There are 10 major hardware components of the computer systems. The first one is the system unit. It is also known as chassis. Its primary function is to hold all the other components together and protect the sensitive electronic parts from the outside elements. Again, the first one is the system unit. The second computer hardware is the motherboard. It is the backbone that ties the computer components together at one spot. It is also the main circuit board inside a computer that connects and allows them to talk to each other. Without it, none of the computer pieces, such as the CPU, and hard drive could interact. Let's get to know the other computer hardware of the system unit. We have the third one, which is the central processing unit or CPU. It is considered as the brain or utak of the computer. It is, it also performs all types of data processing operations. It controls the operation of all parts of the computer. 
Next up is the memory. It is just like a human brain. It is used to store data and instructions. It has also two types, the RAM and ROM. RAM stands for Random Access Memory, which is volatile memory that temporarily stores the files you are working on, while ROM stands for Read-Only Memory which is non-volatile, meaning permanently stores instructions for your computer. Another, another computer hardware is the power supply unit or PSQ. As the name implies, it supplies power inside the computer systems. It is an electrical device that supplies electric power to an electrical load. Also, there are five different cables that are connected in the power supply. We have the 20 plus 4 ATX power connector. Next, we have the 4 plus 4 pin ATX 12 volts power connector or also known as CPU power connector. Another, we have the 4 pin SATA power connector. Also, we have 6 pin PCI Express connector and lost but not the least, we have the 4-pin floppy drive connector. Ito ang nagbibigay ng kuryente sa loob ng computer. For the sixth computer hardware, we have the hard disk drive or HDD. Also known as local disk C in the desktop computer. It stores all your digital content, your documents, pictures, music, videos, programs, application references, and of course, the operating system or OS. Also, the hard drives can be external or internal. Ito din ang dapat natin unang tinitignan kapag bibili tayo ng bagong computer. Now, the seventh computer hardware is the optical disk drive or ODD. Most drives allow you to write data to a disk. So, you can create your own music in the CDs, your video in the DVDs, or even create a backup copy of your important data files. Ito ang lalagyanan ng mga CD at DVDs para magplay. O, D, D. Next, we have the optical disk. It is a computer storage device disk that stores data digitally and uses laser beams transmitted to ROM. A laser head mounted on an optical disk drive to read and write data. There are three main types of optical media or disc. These are the CD, DVD, and Blu-ray disc. CD K 
can store up to 700 megabytes of data. And the DVDs can store up to 8.4 gigabytes of data. And of course, the Blu-ray discs, which are the newest type of optical media, can store up to 50 gigabytes of data. Lalo na ngayong wala pa tayong face-to-face -face class, kailangan natin ang mga ito. For the ninth computer hardware, we have the expansion slot. It is a socket on the motherboard that is used to insert an expansion card or circuit board, which provides additional features to a computer such as video, sound, advanced graphics, ethernet, or memory. Basically, we have three types of expansion slot. First is the PCI Express, which is the best type of expansion slot to have in your PC, also written as PCIe. Second is the PCI slot, which is the most common form of internal, internal expansion for a PC. And lastly, the AGP. This type of expansion slot was specifically designed to deal with graphics adopters. Lastly, we have the expansion card. It is an electronic card or board that is used to add extra functionality to a computer. All expansion cards are used to enhance the quality of their specific function. For example, video graphic cards are used to enhance the video quality on a computer. There are four common types or different types of expansion cards. The first one is the video card which is also called a video adapter or graphics card. It converts computer output into a video signal and sends it to the monitor to display. Second is the sound card. It enhances the sound generating capabilities of a computer. It allows sound to be input through a microphone and output through speakers also. Next up is the Network Interface Card or NIC. It is also called a network card. It is a communication device that allows a computer to communicate via a network. And lastly, modem card. It is also called an internal modem. It is a communication device that enables a computer to communicate via telephone lines or other means. There we have it! We were able to identify the 10 major hardware components of the computer systems. That must be a great job, dear learner! At this point, we will be having a drill. It's actually called an eye exercise in order to master the different or the major hardware components 
of the computer systems. Here is the first picture. What is it? You're right. This is the system unit. Moving on to the next picture. Let's get to know the next one. What computer hardware is this? Very good. This is a motherboard. Let's now try the next one. I'm sure you can easily identify this computer hardware. Yes, you're correct. It is the CPU. Let's now try the next one. Yes, you're right. It is the power supply unit or PSU. And for the last one. What is it? Great job! That's a computer memory. Let's now review and go over to the different hardware components of a computer systems. Again, they are the major computer hardwares. System unit, motherboard, CPU, memory, hard drive, power supply unit, optical drive, optical disk, expansion slot, and of course, the expansion card. Do you have any questions? If there is none, let's check what you have learned from the day's lesson. For those who are watching via FB Live, you can type your answers in the comment box. And for our dear listeners, just write your answers on a sheet of paper. So, let's start. Here is the instruction. Identify what is being asked in the following statements. Choose the letter of the best answer. Are you ready? For number one. What is the brain of the computer? A. CPU. B. System unit. C. Motherboard. Number two. The primary function of this computer hardware is to hold all the other components together. A. Optical drive. B. System unit. C. Motherboard. Number three. Which of the following is just like a human brain? A. Expansion slot. B. Expansion card. C. Memory. Number four. It is a socket on the motherboard that is used to insert an expansion card, which provides additional features to a computer, such as video, sound, and advanced graphics. A. Expansion slot. B. Optical disc. C. Power supply. Finally, for number five. It is the backbone that ties the computer components together at one spot. 
A. Optical drive. B. System unit. C. Motherboard. Wow! Are you done answering the questions? If yes, dear learners, let us check now your answers. For question number one, what is the brain of the computer? The correct answer is letter A, CPU. For number two question, the primary function of this computer is to hold all the other components together. A, optical drive. B, system unit. C, motherboard. The answer is letter B, system unit. For question number three, which of the following is just like a human brain? The correct answer is letter of course, C, memory. Moving on to question number four. It is a socket on the motherboard that is used to insert an expansion card which provides additional features to a computer such as video, sound, and advanced graphics. Great job! It is letter A, expansion slot. Lastly, for number five, it is the backbone that ties the computer components together at one spot. A big yes! The answer is letter B. Letter C, motherboard. Napaka-importante talaga ng mga mothers or nanay, pati sa computer system. Well done! If you got all the answers correctly, you did a great job. For those who did not, you still have lots of time to review and read your notes again. Kayang kaya yan! Once again, thank you for watching and listening. I hope you enjoyed and learned at next site kayo from this day's topic. For those who missed the lesson, you can still watch it on the Facebook page of RTV Tarlac Channel 26 DZTZ Radio Filipino Tarlac. This has been Mom Jenny Marie Bernardino Flores, your teacher broadcaster for today. Always remember, in TLE, we have skills, knowledge, and progress. Ang atarla, mabuhay tarla kenyong learners. Keep safe and God bless. Informasyong may kalidad, servisyong may halaga, sa saan mang bahagi ng Pilipinas, on air, on air. Sa, sa saan mang bahagi ng mundo, online, online. ano mang uri ng pamumuhay, kasama, katuwa, kapino, kabahagi mo, kabahagi mo, Radio Pilipino, Radio Pilipino. Twenty fifth anniversary ng IPRA at Indigenous Peoples Month celebration, ginanap sa Kareter Lac City. Kasabay ng naganap na twenty fifth anniversary ng IPRA o IPRA at Indigenous Peoples Month celebration sa Comland Farm, Comland Compound, ay ang pagsasagawari ng meeting, consultation at lunch fellowship kasama ang IP leaders, IP MRs, IP professionals, IP scholars ng TSU, TAU at La Salette. IP Army Applicants, IP Youth, and IP Elders. Ang nasabing aktibidad na may temang fulfilling the indigenous people's right, 
and ensuring economic sustainability and the security in the ancestral domain ay tinalakay ang kahalagahan ng pagiging isang indigenous people at ang mga responsibilidad na kaakibat nito. Sa mensahe ng dating commissioner ng NCIP at tribal governor na si Rolando M. Rivera, ipinaliwanag nito ang kalagahan ng magandang samahan ng mga IP at ang ilang mga nais nitong maging hakbang upang mas makatulong pa sa mga ito. Ang number one na gusto kong isulong dito sa Laliwigan Talak, sana magkaroon na ng provincial IPMR, karapatan nito ng IP. Kasi nung ako'y nasa NCIP, Meron na akong isinulong na panukala na improvement ng NBank na kung saan merong automatic na representative na IP sa mga barangay na may katutubo, sa mga munisibo na may katutubo, sa syudad at lalawigan na may katutubo. Like for example, in the area of San Jose, merong municipal IPMR, barangay IPMR, sa Mayinto, ganun din. But sad to say, ako mismo ang nagsulong sa IPRA, sa IPMR, ay wala pa ring provincial IPMR sa Laluigan Talak. Ito ang number one na sinusulong ko. Number two, gusto kong magkaroon ng abiling nation. Isusulong namin yan. O kaya abiling economic zone. Para sa ganun, mapakinabangan namin ng tuluyan ang mga lupang ninuno na aming pag-aari. Sinabi rin ito na patuloy gawin ng tama at pahalagahan ng edukasyon na siyang pangunahing isinusulong nito para sa mga IP. Ang number one na palagi kong sinasabi sa ating mga scholars, sa aming GC, sa lahat, mahalin natin ang edukasyon. Huwag natin itong ipagwalang bahala. Dahil ito ang babago sa ating buhay. Tinatayang nasa 29 naman ang dumalong IP na scholar ng TAU, 71 naman sa TSU, 27 sa IP Army applicants at 37 sa Lasalet. Ang naging kinatawa ng Tarlac State University na si Dr. Agnes M. Makaraig ay nagbigay ng mensahe kung saan tinalakay rin ito ang kalagahan ng inokasyon. Let us stop thinking on what the government can give to us and those are the government officials. But rather, let's start thinking on what we could give and provide to the people within our community. At ito po yung komunidad na kinabibilangan ninyo na sinisimulang pagandahin ng inyo pong mga tribal leaders. Kasama niyo po kami, rest assured po, uh, Sir Roland, of our commitment with that. Dapat nating paniwalaan na ang edukasyon ay ang susi sa pagbabago. At kanina ko pa po binabasa yung nakasulat doon, ang edukasyon ay mahalaga, huwag ipagwalang bahala, at dapat itong seryosohin dahil ito ang babago ng buhay natin. Tama po iyon. So sa atin po dapat magsimula ang pagbabago. Ang estudyante naman ng Tarlac State University na si Eugene Halili na siyang kabilang sa abiling tribe na scholar rin nito ay taus puso ang pasasalamat para sa ibinibigay na suporta sa kanilang pag-aaral. Um, naitulong po ng pagiging scholar ng abiling tribe po. Na, nabubuhayan po kami para mag-aaral. Na, nabibigyan po kami ng panibagong bukas para may, patunoy po kami lumaban sa pag-aaral po. Mahirap po mag-aaral pero makakaya po basta may dugo ka pong tribe na abiling kaya mo lahat. Kahit anong pagsubok, kaya mo malampasan po. Nagpapasalamat ko kami kay Comland dahil po sa kanya, nabubuhayan po talaga kami mag-aral. Bagamat iba ang kultura at kinagisna ng ilan sa ating mga indigenous people, hindi natin may pagkakaila na sila ang pundasyon ng ating kamalayan na dapat pangalagaan at pahalagahan. Para sa RTV Tarlac Channel 26, ako si Jam Torrio, nagbabalita. Kumusta mga video kong tagapakinig? Nagbabalik ang inyong paaralang panghipotawid. Aral Tarlac Henyo sa RTV Tarlac Channel 26 at sa bayang naririnig sa DZPC 828 Radyo Pilipino Tarlac. Ayunin ay napapanood sa FB Live 
ng Art Digital Lab Channel 26. Sumasahim pa pawid mula sa bayan ng Pura Tarla. Mula sa bayan ng San Clemente. Mula rito sa Puro Elementary School Pura Tarla. Sa bayan ng Kapas Tarla. Ako ang inyong guro. na maghahatid sa inyo ng makabuluhang pagtalakay sa ating aralin. Welcome to Aral Tarlakenyo here on RTV Tarlac Channel 26, simulcast over DZTC 828 Radio Pilipino Tarlac. I am your teacher broadcaster, Karen S. Bulanadi, aiming to give you a fun-filled learning experience in Music 9. For our first airing, it is time to learn about the music of the classical period. Yes! You heard it right, the music of the classical period. But first, let us first look back on the lessons that we've had during the first quarter. First quarter music took on the first three periods of the Western classical music history, the medieval period, the Renaissance period, and the Baroque period. With your paper and pen, Write M if the descriptions that I will give you is about the medieval period, R if it is about Renaissance period, and B if it is about Baroque period. Are you ready? Here we go. This period extended from 700 to 1400. It is also known as the Dark Ages. Its music is greatly influenced by the church. What is your answer? If you have answered M, you are correct. It is medieval period. Number two. This period extended from 1400 to 1600, the golden age for a cappella choral music. What is your answer? If you have answered R, you are correct. It is Renaissance period. For the last item, this period extended from 1685 to 1750. It came from the word Baroque, which means irregular shape. What is your answer? If you have answered B, you are correct. It is Baroque period. What is your score? If you got all three correct answers, you have a good memory of our last quarter lesson. Let's start with our introduction. This module was written for you to explore and discover the musical elements of classical music. At the end of the lesson, You are expected to be able to recognize the musical elements of the given classical music and show appreciation of classical music. Let's have our first learning task. In one minute, you have to search, then in a circle, the five musical elements from the word on, on the puzzle on your module. Again, in one minute, you have to search, then in a circle, the five musical elements from the word puzzle on your module. Here is our puzzle. Can you find the five elements of music? Let's see if we have the same answers. Here's my answers. I found meter, texture, Dynamics, and of course, tempo. Let us now define each. The first one is meter. 
It is a regular recurring patterns and accents such as bars and beats. Here is the sample pictures of meter. If you notice, meter composed of different patterns. Ang nakikita ninyo sa larawan ay ang nakarectangle na kulay pula ay ang tinatawag nating meter. The next one is dynamics. It refers to the sound of a sound or note. Loudness or softness of sound is none other than dynamics. Again, dynamics is the loudness and softness of sound. The third one is melody, or also known as tune, voice, or line. It is a linear succession of musical tones that the listeners perceive as a single entity. Again, kapag sinabi nating melody, ito ay ang himig o tono ng isang kanta. The fourth one is texture. It is how the tempo, melodic, and harmonic materials are combined in a composition. It is how layers of sounds within a piece of music interact. Kapag sinabi naman nating texture, ito ay ang pagkakaroon ng harmony o iba't ibang tono na pinagsama-sama sa isang musika o kanta. And lastly, the tempo. It is the speed of underlying beat. It can be fast. Moderate or slow. Again, tempo is the speed of underlying beats. Let us now proceed to the musical forms of classical music. Now that we know the musical elements, let us find out how they are applied in classical music. But of course, with, before that, let us define first what is classical era or classical music. Classical era is also called as Age of Reason. It is the period from 1750s to 1820s. The cultural life was dominated by the aristocracy as patrons of musicians and artists generally influenced the arts. Significant changes in musical forms and styles were made. Now, classical music has different forms o iba't ibang uri ng pagkakayari. We have here the sonata. Sonata is a musical composition composed of multi-movement for solo instruments or a small instrumental ensemble. It came from the word sonare, which means to make a sound. Again, sonata came from the word sonare, which means, or sonare, rather, which means to make a sound. The term sonare is applied to a variety of works for solo instruments such as keyboards or violin. Sonata has different movements. Anong tinatawag nating movement? Movement is a musical piece that can be performed on its own but it is part of a larger composition. Sa madaling salita, ito ay ang mga parte sa isang musical composition. The first one is allegro. When we say allegro, it has a fast movement. Again, allegro, fast. Next is andante. When we say andante, it has a slow movement. Again, andante, slow. And then we have the minuet. It is in 3-4 time and in a moderate movement. Again, minuet, moderate. Let us listen to an example of sonata entitled Sonata Number no. 16 in C major. That was beautiful composition. The first part of Sonata, which is the Sonata Allegro, has three distinct sections and these are Exposition, Development, and Recapitulation. 
What is exposition? It is the first part of a composition in sonata or sonata form that introduces the theme. Let us now listen to the exposition part of Mozart Inclined Night Music. <laughs> Alright, that was the first part of the Sonata Allegro, the exposition. Next is development. It is the middle part where themes are being developed. It explores the harmonic and textural possibilities of the thematic material. Let us now listen to the development part of Mozart's Inclined Night Music. Okay, and that was the second part of Sonata Allegro, the development. development. And the last is Recapitulation. It repeats the theme as it first emerged in the opening exposition. If the exposition moves from original key to a new key, the development passes through several key. And the recapitulations return to the original key. Let us listen to the recap recapitulation part of Mozart's Inkling Night Music. <laughs> There you go. I hope you're enjoying our lesson. Let's proceed to the second form of classical music, the concerto. Concerto is composed of multi-movement work and is made for an instrumental soloist and orchestra. The classical form of music is intended primarily to emphasize the individuality of the solo instrument and to exhibit the virtuoso and interpretative abilities of the performer. Here are the some examples of solo instruments used in a concerto. We have the violin, cello, clarinet, bassoon, trumpet, and of course the piano. Concerto has different movements. The first movement is fast. Sonata Allegro form with exposition of the orchestra and then by the soloist. The second movement is slow. It has more ornamentation than the first movement. The third movement is fast or fast again or the finale usually in a form of rondo. Here is the sample music of concerto or the concerto form, the fur elise. for the whole orchestra with generally four movements. 
Symphony is derived from the word sinfonia, which literally means a harmonious sounding together. Again, sinfonia means harmonious sounding together. If concerto has three movements, symphony has four movements. And here are the movements of symphony. The first movement is fast, sonata allegro form. The second movement is slow, gentle. The third movement is medium fast. It uses in a dance form. And the fourth movement is fast movement again. Typically rondo or sonata form. And here is the sample music of symphony, the symphony number no. five. <laughs> Okay, are you familiar with that song? Bohemian Rhapsody. How about that? Yes, it is one of the best examples of music that has many movements. At first, it is slow, but later on, it's getting faster. Okay, and of course, our last form, but definitely not the least, is the classical opera. Opera is an, uh, is an uh, art form that musicians and singers perform a dramatic theatrical setting. We have two styles of opera. We have the opera Syria and opera Buffa. The first one is the opera Syria. Opera Syria or Sirius Opera. This usually implies heroic or tragic drama that employs mythological characters. This was inherited from the Baroque period. Now, let's go with the other type of opera, which called Opera Buffa. Opera Buffa, or also known as the Comic Opera. This is from Italy. Comic opera made use of everyday character and situations and typically employed spoken dialogues, lengthy areas, and was spiced with sight gags, not humor, and social satire. It's time to have a wrap-up of our discussion. I want you to challenge yourself. Type in your answers in the comment section of our FB Live. We'll see if you will get the correct answers. We have the five elements of music. What are they? You are right. We have the meter, melody, dynamics, texture, and of course, the tempo. Next question, what are the forms of music during the classical period? Good job! These are sonata, concerto, symphony, and the classical opera. Now, what are the two types of opera? You are right. The Opera Syria and the Opera Buffa. I can see correct answers from the comment sections. Very good. Tap your shoulder with your right hand and say, Ang galing galing mo. Now let's see how much you have learned for today's lesson. Let's get ready for our next activity. Listen to the classical music that I will play. 
on the box provided draw lines that will represent the tempo and dynamics of the song being played again listen to the classical music that i will play on the box provided draw lines that will represent the tempo and dynamics of the song being played are you ready let's get started here is the first classical music And that was the part list by Ludwig van Beethoven. Let's move to the next music. Okay, and that was the Surprise Symphony by Franz Joseph Hayden. How's the feeling, learner? Are you ready for the third one? Let's move on. The third one was composed by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, the Inkling Knack Music. <laughs> teacher in your respective schools. On the next day, expect that with Mom Joyce Ines, you will be discuss the three, the three composers during the classical period. Okay, I hope you learn a lot today. Again, I am I'm Karen S. Belenadi, your Music 9 anchor teacher for the day, and remember to put a happy ending in your daily life story. Until next time! Lucena, 88.3 Legaspi, 96.1 Surigao, 95.9 Putua, 92.1 Mindoro, 96.7 Tacloba, 99.3 Valera, 95.1 Puerto Princesa, Palawan. <laughs>
This is your one, your only one, your only, only one, 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 one FM. One FM, your only one FM. One, one FM. <laughs> Kanser Lahat ng klase ng tao, pwedeng tamaan ng kanser. Isa ito sa pangunahing sanhin ng kamatayan sa Pilipinas. Kumain ng balanced diet Mag-exercise Umiwa sa alak at sigarilyo Ugaliing magpa-check up Consult tayo sa ating mga primary care provider para sa healthy Pilipinas. Paalala mula sa Department of Health. Tuberculosis Ang TB ay isang seryosong sakit kapag ikaw ay nakaranas ng kahit ano sa mga sumusunod. Ubo, lagnat, pananakit ng dibdib, pagbaba ng timbang, pagkawala ng gana sa pagkain. Kumonsulta agad sa inyong health center. Libre ito. Hindi ito dapat ikahiya dahil ito'y nagagamot na. Maging bahagi ng TB Free Pinas. Konsul tayo sa ating mga primary care provider para sa Healthy Pilipinas. Paalala mula sa Department of Health. Kumusta mga gilyo kong tagapakinig? Nagbabalik ang inyong paaralang panghipotawid. Aral Tarlac Henyo. Sa RTV Tarlac Channel 26. At sa bayang naririnig sa DZTC 828. Radyo Pilipino Tarlac. Ayun rin ay napapanood sa FB Live ng RTV Tarlac Channel 26. Sumasahim pa pa po yun mula sa bayan ng Pura Tarlac. Mula sa bayan ng San Clemente. Mula rito sa Puro Elementary School Pura Tarlac. Sa bayan ng Kapas Tarlac. Ako ang inyong guro. na maghahatid sa inyo ng makabuluhang pagtalakay sa ating aralim. Alam nyo ba na ang gitnang Luzon ay tinaguri ang banga ng bigas ng bayan o kamalig ng palay ng Pilipinas dahil dito nagbumula ang malaking produksyon ng bigas sa ating bansa. Ito ay binubuo ng mga lalawigan ng Aurora, Pataan, Pampanga, Nueva Ecija, Zambales at Tarlac. Pagalihin natin manood ng Aral Tarlac Henyo, lunes hanggang biyernes, alas 8.30 ng umaga hanggang alas 5.30 ng hapon. Ako si Binibining Pia Izrin Kapiral, ang inyong teacher broadcaster sa Araling Panlipunan dito sa Project Shine Aral Tarlac Henyo. Lagi nating tandaan ang pag-aaral ng Araling Panlipunan ay tungo sa daan ng pagiging makajos, makakalikasan, makatao at makabansa. Magandang hapon po sa lahat ng taga-suwibay ng ating Project Shine, RL Tarlacenio, dito sa RTV Tarlac, Channel 26, at sa bayang napapakinggan sa DZTC Radio Pilipino 828 FM Radio, at napapanood via Converge TV Channel 100, FB Live at FB Page ng RTV Tarlac, Channel 26, at sa FB Page ng DepEd Tayo, Tarlac Province. Ako po ang inyong segment host, Kevin Chaster M. Cura, ang AP Leader ng Aranguren Integrated School High School Department, at ang Vice President ng DASEL for Cluster 4 at isang kasalo enthusiast. Ngayong hapon ay mapalad po tayo dahil makakasama natin ang napakahusay na kasamahan natin sa aralang, Araling Panlipunan. Walang iba kundi ang Master Teacher 1 ng Dok Dok High School, isang kasalo enthusiast, Ma'am Jennifer S. Espoto. Magandang hapon, Ma'am Jennifer. Magandang hapon po, Sir Chester. Kasama din po natin ang napakasipag at mahusay na head teacher 3 ng Araling Palipunan ng San Roque High School at isa sa mga pilot teachers ng Kasalo, walang iba kundi si Ma'am Jesusa Tigersia. Magandang hapon, Ma'am. Magandang hapon po sa lahat. All right. So magandang hapon po muli, Ma'am Janet, Ma'am Jesusa. So welcome po sa ating Project Shine Aral Tarlacenio 
sa Division Virtual Project ka sa Lucio Radio. So, bago po tayo magsimula sa ating pagsa ngayong hapon, mabatiin muna natin ang lahat ng mga nanonood ng, sa ating FB Live at maging yung mga nangkikinig sa RTV Tarlac Channel 26 at sa DZTC Radio Filipino 8.2 FM Radio. Ma'am Jen. Okay, so isang magandang hapon po sa ating lahat, lalo na sa aking dalawang kasama ngayong hapon, Ma'am Jesusa and Sir Chester. At syempre, sa mga giliw nating taga-subaybay ng Kasalo sa Radyo, blessed afternoon po. Alright, Ma'am Jesusa. Magandang hapon, Sir Lambert, Sir Chester, at Ma'am Jen, at sa lahat ng sumusubaybay sa napakagandang programa ng ating divisyon, ang Project Shine, Aral Tarlakenyo, Project Kasalo sa Radyo. Stay safe po dahil nasa alert level 3 na po tayo. So, tutok lang po kayo, Ma'am Jesusa Bautista Garcia, dito lang po sa Bayan ng Bamban. Alright, so maraming salamat po Ma'am Jen at Ma'am Jesusa. So, tatalakayin natin at pag-uusapan ngayong araw sa ating project Kasalo sa Radyo ay ang kasaysayan ng bamban. So, sa mga hindi po nakakaalam, ang dalawang panelist po natin na si Ma'am Jesusa at si Ma'am Jennifer ay parehong taga-bamban. Kaya sigurado ako na alam na alam nila kung ano ang kasaysayan ng kanilang bayan. Alright, so isa sa mga makasaysayang bayan ng Tarlac ay ang bamban. O, naginawang hintila ng pamahalang revolusyonaryo ng dating Pangulong Emilio Aguinaldo at naging taguan din ito ng mga Hapon. So bukod dito, kilala rin sa kanyang magandang parke at ang groto ng Birheng Lordes na nasa tuktok ng bundok ang Bamban. Pero bago pa ang mga ito, ano nga ba ang Bamban bago dumating ang mga Kastila, Ma'am Jesusa? Okay, ang Bamban bago po man dumating ang mga Kastila ay isang malawak na kagubatan mga kabundukan at burol kung saan likas ito sa mga pananim at matatayog ng mga puno. Ayon sa talaan ng kasaysayan, ang mga naunang nanirahan dito ay mga aitas or negritos at mga zambal. Ang mga aitas ay may matalas na instito at pakiramdam. Mga kaalaman batay sa mga kilos at pagmamasid na sadyang taglay na nila. Ang sambal naman ay galing sa salitang samba ng ibig sabihin ay pananampalataya sa mga espirito ng kanilang mga yumaong ninuno. Ang mga aita at sambal ay ang siyang gumalugad sa napakayabong na kagubatan, katubigan at kapatagan. Sila ang, ay sinunda ng mga kristyanong nagmula sa Pampanga at iba pang karatig puok na naging maunlat. Masagana ang pamumuhay sa paglipas ng panahon, dumami pa ang mga nanirahan dito hangga sa unti-unti may nabuong sityo na naging baryo at bayan. Hmm. Alright, so ganun pala yung bamban noon at bago ito naging bamban na kilala natin ngayon, Mami Susa, maraming salamat po doon sa impormasyong inyong uh, ibinigay. So paano naman naging isang bayan ang bamban, Ma'am Jen? Well, Sir Chester, ayon sa aking napag-alaman naman, noong 1812 ay naging bayan ang Bamban. Ang pangalan nito ay nagmula sa isang uri ng damo sa tubigan na ang tawag ay Mabambowa o Bambanya na makikita sa matabang lambak nito. Ito ay dating bahagi ng Pampanga na ang kabisera ay Villa de Bacolor. Taong 1700s, ang mga Agustinian Recoletos ay dumating at itinatag ang Misyon de Pueblos de Bamban. Sa taong 1872 naman, nasali ito sa mga bagong tatag na lalawigan ng Tarlac. At noong ikalabing siyam na dantaon naman, muli itong naging baryo ng bayan ng Kapas. At naibalik muli ang pagiging bayan nito noong 1874 at naging sakop muli ng lalawigan ng Tarlac. Alright, ang dami palang napagdaanan ng bamban bago ito naging bayan, no Ma'am Jen? Yes po. Hindi naman kung malaman, Ma'am Jesusa, ano ba yung mga pangunahing hanap buhay ng mga taga-bamban? Okay, Sir Chester, ang pangunahing hanap buhay sa bamban ay pagsasaka at panginisda. Dahil na rin sa ilog ng Sakobia na nagmumula sa Mabalak at Pampanga at ilog Marimla na galing sa kabundukan ng Bamban at nagtatagpo ito sa ilog Bamban na sagana sa isda. Payak at simple lamang ang buhay ng mga mamamayan dito bago pa man makarating ang mga dayuhang Kastila. Mm -hmm. Alright, so ganun pala ang pangunahing hanap buhay ng mga taga-Bamban, Ma'am Susa. So marami, la, uh, marami pa rin mga, mga pwedeng... Uh, maging trabaho sa bayan ng Bamban. Pero ngayon, gusto ko malaman, Ma'am Jen, 
Sino sino yes. ba yung mga naging unang pinuno ng bamban? Okay, so maraming naging pinuno no sa panahon na yon ng bamban. So pangunahin dito ay si Don Martin Sibal na una siyang na-appoint na head and commission with the rank of kapitan. Sumudon naman si na Feliciano Kaugiran, Marciano Kajang, Lorenzo Lugtu, Rafael Maristela, Jose Sibal na kilala din sa Kapitan Sipsip, Antonio Macale, Martin Sibal, Simeon Deirit, Paulino Vergara, Cesario Sibal, Andres Macale, Juan Deirit, Flaviano Sibal, Felix De La Cruz, Jose Sibal, at si Pablo Rivera. O di ba ang dami nila? Oo nga, ang dami pa ng mga naging pinuno ng bambahan ng Jen. Yes. So, uh, Ngayon naman gusto kong malaman para mas malaman pa natin ang kasaysayan ng bamban. Ano ba yung nangyari sa bayan ng bamban noong panahon ng mga Kastila, Ma'am Jesusa? Uh, maraming mga pangyayaring naganap sa bayan ng bamban sa panahon ng Kastila. Unahin natin yung pangkalahata o pagkatatag ng Misyon de Pueblos ng mga Agustinong Recoleto na siyang nagpalaganap ng Christianis- Christianismo at nagtuturo sa mga bago ng bago kabihasnan sa mga parokya. At uh, ang mga bago tinuturoan din nila yung mga negrito. Ang unang naging parokya ay ang simbahan ng Santo Nino at ang estatwa nito ay nasa pangangalaga ni Ginoong Arsenio Pamintuan. Nagtatag din na paaral ang parokya na ang nag-aaral ay mga anak ng mga prinsipalya o mayayamang pamilya na may malawak na lupain. May nagtuturo din ng katon at kartilya sa mga bata at bahay-bahay. Ano nga ba ang katon? Ang katon ay uh, panimulang aklat sa pagbasa na nakasulat sa Espanyol. Mas malaki, mas maraming pahina kaysa kartilya. Ang kartilya naman ay tulad ng sa kindergarten primer book. May maikling mensahe, sulat o mga panuto at paalala. Noong 1873, nahiwalay ang bamban sa Pampanga. at naging sakop ng lalawigan ng Tarlac. Tulad ng nabanggit kanina ni Ma'am Jen at ng, sa mga unang episode ng ating kasalo sa radyo, natala kay sa mga naunang episode na noong 1872, ang dating komandansya militar ni Tarlac ay itinatag bilang isang bagong lalawigan na tinawag na lalawigan ng Tarlac. At ito ay binubuo ng mga bayan ng Porac, Florida Blanca, Mabalakat, Magalang, Bamban, Kapas, Concepcion, Tarlac at Victoria. Ang siyang nabayan ay mula lahat sa bayan na o lalawigan ng Pampanga. Sa ikalawang pagkatatag naman ng Tarlac ay nagkaroon ng pagbabago. Ibinalik sa Pampanga ang mga bayan ng Pora, Florida Blanca, Magalang at Mabalakat. At isinama naman sa mga bayan ng Bamban ang Kapas, Concepcion, Tarlac at Victoria at Yun nga, isinama ang Hirona, Kamilig at Paniki na mula lahat sa lalawigan ng Pangasinan. So, ang walong mga bayan na nabanggit ang siyang bumuo sa pangalawang tatag ng lalawigan ng Tarlac noong May 28, 1873. Sa panahon pa rin ng mga Kastila, nagkaroon din ng mga dakan at naitayo ang tulay ng bamba noong 1888. Nagkaroon ng mga sasakyang panlupa tulad ng karosa, kariton, karitela at kalesa. Ang sasakyang pantubig naman ay uh, balsa at bangka. Noong 1896, nang magkaroon ng Revolusyong Pilipino laban sa mga Kastila, ang Bamban, ang isa sa pinakaunang bayan na nag-alsa laban sa mga Kastila. Sumanib ang mga katutubo sa kilusang katipuna sa Tarlac sa pamumuno ni Serbeliano Aquino ng Concepcion, Kapas at Bamban na lolo ng yumaong senador Binigno Aquino Jr. Sa panahon naman ng kampanya para sa kalayaan, ang mga magigiting na tagapagtanggol na Pilipino sa pumumuno ni General Emilio Aguinaldo ay nagtungo sa mayabong na kagubatan ng Bamban Hills at ginawa itong pansamantalang kabisera ng pamahalaang revolusyonaryo ng Pilipinas noong ika ng Hunyo 1899. Pagkatapos ng himagsikan, muling nabuhay ng mapayapa ang mga mamayan pero sila ay naghirap dahil sa pagkasira ng kanilang mga ari-arian. Alright, ang dami palang mga makasisayang pangyayari sa bayan ng Bamban noong panahon ng mga kasila, Ma'am Hilusa. Ngayon naman, ano ba yung mga mahalagang pangyayari sa Bamban noong panahon ng mga Amerikano, Ma'am Jen? 
Yes, Sir Chester. So, nung panahon naman ng Amerikano, tinatag ang pamahalaang insular sa Pilipinas noong 1900s hanggang 1901. Naging unang presidente municipal si Don Pablo Lagman at pangalawang presidente si Laureano Campo. Nagkaroon din ng daang bakal ng tren mula sa Maynila hanggang sa Dagupan. Mabilis na umunlad ang transportasyon dahil sa pagkakaroon ng mga sasakyan at konkretong daanan. Isa rin ang pagkakatatag no, ng Bamban Sugar Central na nagbigay uh, ng malaking trabaho para sa mga bambanense kung tawagin. Marami rin mga pampublikong paaralan ang naipatayo noong panahon ng mga Amerikano sa Bamban. Kung saan naman itinuro sa mga bata ang wastong pangangalaga at paglilinis sa katawan upang maiwasan ang sakit. Ika nga yung tinatawag nating proper hygiene, Sir Chester. Alright, Ma'am Jen. Marami palang naiambag ang mga Amerikano sa pag-unlad ng bayan ng Bamban, Ma'am Jen. Yes. Pero ano naman yung uh, pangyayari noong panahon ng mga Hapon sa Bamban? So, nung dumating ang mga Hapon or Hapones no, during the Japanese Imperial Army, natakot ang mga mamamayan. Sila ay nagtago at nagsilikas sa mga lugar na di narating o nasakot ng mga Hapones. Marami ang nakaranas ng paghihirap sa kamay ng mga Hapones. Ginawang garrison o detention camp ang Sugar Central ng Bamban. At upang malabanan sila, Nagtatag ang mga mamamayan ng bamban ng mga kilusan laban sa mga Hapones. At ito ang A Company at 101 Squadron, Bruce Guerrilla, Bamban Battalion, South Tarlac Militar, Luzon Guerrillas Forces na pinamunuan ng Amerikanong Kapitan na si Alfred De Bruce. Samantala, si Teniente General Jonathan Wainwright naman ang naging pangunahing opisyal ng Kilusang Yusafe o tinaguri ang United States Army Forces in the Far East ay humimpil sa Central Luzon Sugar Mill Company o Asukarera di Bamban nang umurong sila sa labuna, labanan mula sa Hilaga patungong Bataan. At sa huling bahagi ng ikalawang digmaang pandaigdig, ang malaking hukbong imperial ng Hapon ay gumawa ng mga kweba at tunnel sa mga burol ng bamban para maging depensa sa kanilang kaligtasan sa pamumuno naman ni Major General Rikichi Chokada ng grupong Kembu na may 30,000 na sundalo. Sa panahon din ng Hapon, Bumagal ang pag-unlad ng pagsasaka. Alam naman natin yon, di ba? Ang komersyo at iba pang industriya. Nahinto rin ang mga mag-aaral sa panahong ito dahil takot silang pumasok sa mga paaralan, Sir Chester. Actually, nung uh, makikita natin sa Bamba, no, itinayo ang tinatawag na Bamban Museum History na doon ay makikita ang ilang remnants ng World War II na kung saan itinatag ito ni Ginoong Ronnie de la Cruz as well as yung Bamban Historical Society. Alright, uh, grabe pala yung nangyari sa Bamban noong panahon ng mga Hapon, Ma'am Jen. Ngayon naman upang mas kilalanin nating mabuti ang Bamban sa pamamagitan ng pagtalakay ng topograpiya nito na ipapaliwanag naman sa atin ni Ma'am Jesusa. Ma Jesusa. Okay, thank you Sir Chas. Ang Bamban ang pinakatimog na bayan ng lalawigan ng Tarlac. Ito ay may layong 100 km mula sa Maynila at 32 km mula naman sa bayan ng Tarlac. Ang kabuang lawak nito ay 39,000 at 39,090 hektarya. Napaliligiran ito ng kapas sa Hilaga, Concepcion sa Silangan, Mabalakat Pampanga sa Timog at Butolan sa Mbales sa Kanluran. Ang hangganan nito sa Mabalakat Pampanga ay ang ilog sa Kobya na karugtong ng ilog Parua sa Concepcion. Ang ito pagrupig ng Bamban ay uh, binubuo ng kapatagan na may 36,365 na hektarya. Maburol ang bahaging 2,245 na hektarya at mabundok naman ang bahaging 300 na hektarya. 
O oh, yan, so ngayon na uh, nalaman na natin ang topografiya ng bamban, kilalanin naman natin yung iba't ibang ilog ng bamban na ipapaliwanag naman sa atin ni Ma'am Jennifer. Ma'am Jen. Okay, so may limang ilog na dumadaloy sa bamban na siyang pinagkukuna ng ikinabubuhay at ng irigasyon sa bukid. Ito ay ang mga ilog parua sa barangay Lourdes, ang ilog sa Cobia sa San Vicente, Ilog Bamban sa Santo Nino, Ilog Panaysan sa San Nicolas, at Ilog Anupol sa Anupol mismo. Pero bukod sa mga ilog, ang lupa sa Bamban sa Chester ay mataba, mabuhangin, magaspang at pino na siyang angkop sa pagsasaka. Marami din itong batong pumis sa barangay Lourdes, Banaba, San Pedro at Malonso na nakadeposito sa mga ilog na kung saan ay ginagamit sa stone washing. Siguro, familiar ka doon, Sir Chester, para magmukhang kupas ang pantalon at jacket. At alam mo din ba, ginagamit din pala itong pangalis ng dead skin no? sa mga kalyo natin, yung parang nagpa-foot spa, yung gano'n. Ay, oh, oh, meron kaming ganyang bato sa aming mga banyo, Ma'am Jen. Yes. Marami pa ng mga likas na yaman at anong tubig ang makikita sa bamban. Pero paano naman yung edukasyon sa bamban, Ma'am Jesusa? Okay, nung una, ang bamban ay uh, isang distrito o pampurok na bahagi ng DepEd na binubuo ng uh, labilimang paaralang elementarya at uh, dalawang sekundarya. Sa ngayon, meron na itong dalawang distrito, ang bamban East at ang bamban West. Ang dalawang pampublikong paaralang sekundarya ay ang San Roque National High School na dating San Roque Experimental High School at ang Dapdap Presettlement High School na tinatawag na ngayong Dapdap High School na itatag ang San Roque Experimental High School noong July 11, 1966 through Memorandum No. 14, Series 1966. At ang pinakaunang guro o tumayong punong guro dito ay si Ginang Carmen O. Flores kasama ang pitong guro pa ng sekundarya at ilang guro mula sa elementarya na nagsiservisyo o nagtuturo bilang part-time teachers at sumasahod lamang sila sa halagang 2,424 sa isang taon. Ang San Roque National High School ay uh, dating experimental na naging San Roque Barangay High School na naging San Roque High School na ngayon ay tinatawag na ngang San Roque National High School. Samantalang ang dapdap, ay nabuo bilang resettlement high school by virtue of Republic Act 7637. Ito ay sinimulang itayo noong 1992 ng Task Force Pinatubo at nakumpletong gawin noong 1994 ng Mount Pinatubo Commission at naitatag noong July 11, 1994. Noong unang operasyon nito ng Dapdap High School ay uh, nasa direct control ng supervision ng DEX bilang satellite school ng San Roque High School. So, sampung teacher o regular permanent teacher mula San Roque National High School ang itinilaga sa Dapdap Resettlement High School. Dahil sa ipinamalas na dedikasyon ng DEX, Mount Pinatubo Coordinator, kasama ang mahusay na pamamahala ni Madam Esther S. Medina, na siyang punong guro sa panahon na yon. Gayun din ang Mount Pinatubo Coordinator, nagpatuloy yung pag-improve at pag-asenso o kagalingan ng Dapdap High School. Nagpatuloy ang pagtaas ng bilang ng mga mag-aaral kung kaya't nangailangan pa ng mga guro. Sa pamamagitan ni Dr. Alberto P. Gamboa, ang ating Education Program Supervisor in Social Studies sa mga panahon na yon, ang Mount Pinatubo Commission ay nananggapan ng mga guro on contractual basis para magserbisyo sa loob ng sampung buwan. Kaya pagkatapos lamang ng tatlong buwan, yung mga na, na inilagay na yung na guro na mga pinatubo commission ay ginawa ng permanent ang posisyon. So sa taong 1996, lahat ng guro na yan sa ilalim ng MPC or Mount Pinatubo ay ginawang regular permanent. Isa ito sa pinaka-best o may tuturing na achievement ng uh, Ramos Presidency. Uh, magbibigyan lang ako ng konting uh, mga nakamit na karangalan ng Dapdap at ng San Roque, ano, Sir Chester. Pahitulot mo lang, no? Noong November 27, 1997, nakamit ng San Roque o ng inyong lingkod yung second place sa Commission on Population National Slogan Contest. Yung winning piece natin, eh, 
pamilyang nakaplano, pag-asensoy, sigurado. Then, nakamit din ng San Roque National High School ang Sustainability Award for winning first place in Division Project BIM for three consecutive years. Yung Project BIM, ito yung Banking, Education, and Division uh, Allied Materials. So, may apat na kategorya yan. Sa huling taon ng implementasyon ng Project BIM, nakamit ng San Roque yung mga sumusunod. Best in Local Research. Best in Museum, Best in Instructional Materials Development, Best in Social Studies Garden. Nakamit din ni Madam Esther S. Medina ang Most Outstanding School Principal. Sa panig naman ng Dapdap, ang Dapdap High School ay uh, kinilala bilang Most Outstanding Secondary School in the whole division of Tarlac in 2004. So, ang mga naging principal ng Dapdap High School na nagkamit ng parangal bilang outstanding public secondary school principal ay ang mga sumusunod. Madam Esther S. Medina, yung pioneer. Dr. Epipanya Bidungka, school year 1999-2000. Madam Raquel G. Kayabiyab, school year 2003-2004. Madam Esmeralda Jose, for school year 2005-2006. At si Madam Amelia Cachero, for school year 2009. Ito ay ilan lamang sa mga nakamit na karangalan ng San Roque National High School at Dapdap High School na patunay na naglilingkod ng tapat para sa bata at para sa bayan. Alright, maraming maraming salamat Ma'am Jesusa. Napakarami palang mga achievements ng mga paaralan sa Bamban. Ngayon naman, nabanggit nyo yung tungkol sa pagsabog ng Bulgang Pinatubo. Ano ba yung mga nangyari sa Bamban noong sumabog ang Bulgang Pinatubo, Ma'am Jen? Yes, Sir Chester. So, sabi nga dahil malapit sa Pampanga at Sambales, no, syempre damay ang Bamban sa trahedya ng Mount Pinatubo. Sumabog ito noong June 12, taong 1991 na kung saan ang bamban ay sinalanta ng lahar noong Agosto 28 hanggang 30 taong 1992. Nagbago ang physical environment, population at livelihood ng mga tao. Ang San Pedro, Malonso at Bangko ay lumubog sa lahar. Halos 90% sa mga mamamayan ang naapektuhan. Ang ibang barangay naman ay binaha ng tubig. Ang kabayanan o poblasyon ay lubos na nagkisala kaya iniligas ang mga nakatira rito sa mataas na lugar. Walang matamnan ang mga tao dahil sa lahat ay natuyo na parang simento ang mga bukid. Kaya ang dapdap at may nang resettlement areas ang naging bagong pamayanan ng Bamban. Sa dapdap lang, mahigit 3,000 pamilya ang nailikas. Ang iba naman ay nanatili sa villages ng Rolling Hills, Sampalo, Pandan, Pag-asa, Magurul-Gurul at Mano. Kaya't noong magbukas muli ang Clark Air Base, ay nagbigay ng panibagong oportunidad sa mga bambayan kasi. Isa lang ang bambayan sa bayan ng Tarlac na may istorya ng paglubog at pagbangon. Sir Chester? Alright, Ma'am Jen, maraming salamat. Nakakatuwang isipin na napakabunga at makasaysayan ng ating pagtatalakay ngayong araw. So kaya naman, nagpapasalamat po ako sa ating mga naging panelist na si Ma'am Jesusa, at si Ma'am Jennifer sa pag-share nila ng kanilang mga kaalaman tungkol sa kasaysayan ng bayok ng Bambato. Muli, ako po ang segment host, Mr. Kevin Chatter M. Urang, AP Leader ng Aranguren Integrated School at ang Vice President ng DASEL 4 Cluster 4 at isang kasalo enthusiast na nagsasabing ang pag-aaral ng kasaysayan lokal ay daan sa pag-unawa ng nakaraan at pinagmulan. Ito rin ang daan upang ganap na maunawaan ang pambansang kasaysayan na siyang daan sa pagiging makajos, makatao, makakalikasan at makabansa. Maraming maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat po, Mesusa at Ma'am Jen. Thank you, Sir Jester. ba na ang gitnang luson ay tinaguri ang banga ng bigas ng bayan o kamalig ng